So it curved the appetite? Yeah. I would think you were going to say you like music, but all right. <laughs> Into the scene, um, and I was bring sensible water because, like, you can eat and you can drink and you can carve out the water with it, and it not get sucked for the taste. So I thought it was true because, like, I had that's what that looked like. So she was sitting back here, like, yeah, 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 like, let me see. Okay. My name is Evan. I would bring. We all have Jesus. No, you just shut down my whole operation. <laughs> Jesus is already in the desert. He, 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 give another The survivor guy that has survived. Oh, that's you. Okay. Next. Yeah, I don't know. So you're you're with a crew that's not surviving. A knife? What are you gonna cut in the desert? Yeah, I'll the desert. That's smart. You might need that. I got you. Next. What about that sandstorm that's going to be happening? <laughs> then I just pick it and wrap me up. Or because I would be smart. Okay. Next. I'm going to throw this is supposed to be, but I'm going to bring a blowhorn so somebody can hear me from far distances that I don't know. Somebody might be stepping my step in the desert. Oh, so they're going to hear you. That was exciting. Do I need? Oh, me? Yeah, did you want to? You don't have to. My name is Natasha, and I want to bring one thing. Yes, and it has to be something that represents you. I think we kind of lost it. Shoes. 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 Yeah. Shoes. Yeah. And why would you bring shoes? Did you want to get the You want to get You wouldn't be concerned about the monster that's going to chase you in the no. level. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, right. Okay. What? Uh, Kendra, why would you bring water? Y'all in the same boat. Y'all going to survive. Why would you bring water? <laughs> it's just <smart. laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. What would you bring that in? Would it be a big sun hat? Yes. Oh. All right. What? 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 Next. <laughs> we know you're going to bring your hand because you always have your hand. So you just going to go along with the non survival Okay. I'm <laughs> 
Yeah, I got a I heard. <laughs> from water. Okay, Nat. It's you. <laughs> Why would you burn watermelon? I was, I was stuck out there. If you were stuck in the desert, one item that you would bring that represents you. It represents me. A picture of my kids. What? What is that going to help you get some happen? It don't help me. So it's going to help me get back to them. Oh, see, that's motivation. <laughs> <laughs> Let me add that to that. A picture of my wife and my kids. Good job. Good job. I would bring, oh, I'm Kendrick, but you already know that. Um, I wouldn't be stuck in the desert. Just like that. Why there we go. Because I want to be stuck in the desert. What is the desert? I said, why can't you tell me you need water? Need water. Need water. Need water. Need water. Need water. I'll be the person to help y'all survive. You swear to be water. Oh, so you're the person that gets. Like, <laughs> somebody put a line or something? I'm the search person. <laughs> Do I have to come up with another icebreaker? Oh, yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. 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 All right, everybody, let me have your attention. We got a very special guest tonight, but I do want to. This is the formal version of our session, so we're going to open up with a word of prayer, everybody. Um, everybody remember who I am? Yes. Let me hear you. Pastor, stop saying Pastor Brockenberry, Pastor Thomas. Pastor Thomas, I ain't old enough to be sitting here. That's the last thing. But we do have a special guest tonight that's going to be with us for a while to talk to you, speak into your life. Um, we're going to open up with, with a word of prayer. Everybody by your heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this session. As we get ready to go forward, God, we ask that your Holy Spirit rest rule and abide over this uh, over this conference room, which we are turning into a sanctuary, God. A sanctuary to experience you, God, like never before, God. Each and every young person here has a yearning and a desire to get close to you, to get next to you, to understand your purpose for their life, God. So right now, God, we surrender to you completely and with total authority, God. Have your way, God, in this session. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Everybody get excited. Everybody get excited. Everybody stand up. Get excited. I'm excited for tonight. We're going to open up with a song of worship before I guess uh, I guess she can come to tonight. Um, I have not had the opportunity to meet him personally until he got here, but I'm excited. I've talked to Bishop Carrington about him, and as much as Bishop Carrington is excited about him being with us, I'm excited about him being with us. Um, I want you all to be open, receptive, receive from him, hear from him. Um, be attentive. None of the talking in the back, y'all, none of the, the sidebar conversations. Um, treat this as the most vital thing that you can experience in your life today. Amen? Amen. Everybody agree? Everybody came here for a reason other than just to play, right? 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 <laughs> Young ones. Young ones, I need y'all to pay close attention as well. This is what the older, as the older people. Um, we're all together right now besides the little, little ones. So you all have an ability to understand and comprehend what's going to be said tonight. Um, we're going to, like I said, we're going to open up with a song of worship for my daughter, Alexis Clark. Alexis. Everybody give her a round because this is not. Um, I'm going to sing Welcome. Um, welcome 
into this place. Welcome into this broken vessels you desire to find in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands as we lift our hearts as we offer up sweet praise unto your name. Welcome to this place. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands as we lift our hearts as we offer up sweet praise unto your name. As we offer up sweet praise unto your name. As we get ready to go into this point, I need you all to understand what she just said and what the atmosphere is, is conducive of. Um, when you say welcome, you, you're inviting God in right now to begin something new, to start something new, to meet you like never before, so that you can experience something like never before. Um, I told earlier, the group earlier, that as we have, as we start off with this youth conference today, we're getting ready to take this thing somewhere that has never been before. And I want you all to be a part of that ride, that challenge, that mandate. Um, you all are full gospel people, full gospel youth, full gospel young adults. And so we are taking this thing to be that, to be in that place so that you all can be examples, to be a living example. Um, our favorite scripture is like Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you before, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice acceptable and holy, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Um, a part of that is the biggest thing that most young people deal with. And as I bring off uh, Pastor Nix, you can come on, sir. Um, we, as, uh, Pastor Locke, excuse me, as I bring up, bring up Pastor Locke, um, I want you all to understand that this it has to be a mindset change. Today, you all learned about choices. Today you all learned about experiencing life in a different way. Um, as we go forward, I need you all to pay close attention to what he has to speak into your life. Amen? Amen. He gives prophet, I mean, he gives Pastor Lock the hand. Amen. <laughs> yeah, the pastor prophet, you know, whatever he is. It, 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 it's simply really mad anymore. I feel like I'm a little bit overdressed. Can I take my jacket off? Yeah. <laughs> if I would have known y'all was dressed like that, I would have worn my jewelry and my jeans. <laughs> um, before we get started, she was singing this song. You have an awesome gift. So you were saying, you have an awesome gift. You have an awesome gift. But before we get started, I, I kind of noticed that as she was singing, um, everybody was listening. But I don't know if anybody in here uh, understands that there is something that happens when you two offer your own praise to the Lord. Um, we love voices. We love when we see others sing, when others offer their gifts to God. But just for a moment, I just wanted to have everybody in here. You just lift your hands as we give God our own personal worship, every single person. Um, what I really want to deposit in you is not uh, you sitting here and just listening to me this whole time. That's easy. It happens to all you conferences. People sit there, listen to the speaker. You come in one way, you leave unchanged. You heard the words coming one way out the other. You can just, for a moment, you close your eyes. Don't look at me. Don't focus on me. I'm just the clay God is using. But if you can just just focus on the sacrifice that Jesus had and that he made for you. He gave his life for you. He, he bled and died for you. I know you know he did it for the church. But a lot of people don't understand that he did it for you. That you, you would not have the right 
to the tree of life, that you would not have the right to call him your Lord and Savior if he had not bled for you. I know a lot of you guys are your, your church kids. You were raised in church for gospel, and so you hear it all the time. But because you hear so much, it becomes vague. It becomes insincere. And you, you really don't recognize uh, how much you've allowed that sacrifice that Jesus has paid for you to just go over your head. Lord, we just thank you in this place, Father. As our hands are lifted, God, we show a sign of surrender, saying, God, if we show you our hands, we pray to God you will show us yours. God, that you would impart something into the lives and the hearts of every person, of every youth in here, God, that they have purpose over their life. They have destiny, God, for them. There is a, there is a purpose for them, God. There is somewhere you want to take them in life, God, that their life is not going to end here. God, that there is purpose, God. They are not going to fall. God, as a statistic, God, they are not going to fall into the background of the shadows of what peer pressure will cause for them to do, God, but they shall be leaders in their generation, God. And as their hands are lifted, God, I pray that you will not only look at my hands, but God, look at their hands, God, and, and, and touch every sincere heart. For God, you know the sincerity of your people, God, even those that may be putting up a cold front, even those that may not necessarily want to be here, but God, they're here for a purpose and a time, God. There is a reason that they are here, God. There's something that you want to deposit into their spirit, God, for them to leave this place and never be the same. So God, I speak right now. God, that your power and your anointing will fall in this place, God, and that you would touch every heart, every soul, every mind, God, and that you would become, come in, God, and begin to filter out everything that's not like you, every struggle, God, everything that they've seen, everything that they've experienced, God, whether it's been in their home, whether it's been in their own life, God, the things they've seen, God, that may have wounded them or caused them, God, to stray away from you, God, even the tugging and the pulling of the enemy, trying to pull them out of your grip, God, trying to pull them out of the safety of your tower, God, I pray right now, God, that the hand of the enemy is lifted off of their life, God, and that they shall be free in the mighty name of Jesus, God, no struggles, no bondage, for God, struggles and bondage starts at a young age and break. God, now generational curses in the name of Jesus. God, that no generational curse, God, will be able to destroy their life. God, that no generational curse, God, will cause them to live a life that they don't want to live. God, that no generational curse will cause them to have struggles that they don't even understand that attacks them before they even have knowledge of what a generational curse is. I speak, God, that freedom are in, this, in their temples, God, that they are free, that they are free. Everybody, just, just, just begin to, eyes still closed, begin to talk to God. Somebody just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm good. I'm good with, with class participation. I need to hear everybody. Everybody say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, now I'm, I'm going to ask you to say one more time. Imagine you're at a basketball game. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, maybe you don't like basketball. Maybe you like football. Imagine you're at a football game. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Baltimore, if you were at a Florida Ravens game, how loud would you be? Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, you ain't going to be that calm. Say it one more time. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's some praise in here. Come on. All the way from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm, I'm not that old. Somebody told me I look old. 25 years old. Uh, I got saved when I was eight years old. Of course, I lived. I was a, a, a prodigy of church. I was raised in church, and you know how it is. I, when I was growing up, I didn't have an option to go to church. I don't know how many of y'all got parents like that. Um, going to church wasn't an option. Uh, if she was going to church, or my mom and my dad, if they were going to church, I was going to church. I didn't have a choice to stay home. And so I was raised in church, and it was hardcore, and even times I didn't want to go, I still had to go. But because of that, um, when I turned 18, I kind of drifted. It was time for me to go to college. I went to Tennessee State University. I kind of drifted off a little bit. And uh, I, 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 I was succumbed by the peer pressure of the people around me, and I started giving in to the temptation and the things that were going on around me. And um, I failed. And uh, I rededicated my life to the Lord at 19 years old. And um, my God, I wish I would have never walked away because I, I didn't understand uh, how good I had it until I walked away. And some of you may be in that same place. You didn't understand how good you have it being able to go to church and having a family that is, and, and parents that are there to encourage you and are praying for you. Um, and sometimes we take even the salvation that we have for granted because we're, we, we feel as if we're made to do it or as if we're pressured into doing it. So we take it for granted. And um, when I gave my life back to the Lord at 19, the Lord saved me and, and, and freed me. I got married at 20, so I'm you know, 25 years old. I've been walking in ministry since I was 20 years old. Um, and, and the Lord has, has really blessed me to be able to empower and encourage youth and, and men and women of God all around. Um, it, grab, grab your phones uh, if you have. I know everybody has phones. We have smartphones. We have the Bible app. 
Okay, just just get the Bible app real quick. You know, go to Luke, Saint John, Saint John, uh, six and sixty. But yeah, y'all, you know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, y'all, y'all get your phone. Huh? Go to the Bible. If you don't got the Bible app on your phone, say shame on you. <laughs> yeah, I ought to have the Bible app on my phone. Amen. St. John, St. John, the sixth chapter, starting the 16th verse. The 16th verse. St. John, 6 and 60. 6 and 60. Now, let, me, let me just let y'all know how I operate real quick. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a man of God that, that, that deals with amen. That's the only way I'm going to know that you listen to me. Uh, if I can't hear amen, um, I don't know if you got it yet. And so I'm going to have to keep going over it until I know that you got it. So when you understand something, say amen. amen. You, know, you understand? Amen. 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 You don't say amen, I'm, I'm not going to know if you're here. I've got to come come grab you if I had to ask your neighbor to slap you, wake you up. That's, that's fine. We do it all right. This is going to be a holy slap, though. Be a slap, slap in the love of Jesus. Amen. There ain't going to be no, no fighting slap. But I uh, just want to make sure that you get it. I want to make sure that I'm departing something into you. Listen, I'm really not into... Uh, I want to just warn you ahead of time. I'm really not into into foolery. That's, that's the word we use when I come from. I'm not into a whole lot of fluff. I don't like pumping a lot of stuff up. I don't, like, I don't have to speak a lot of uh, profound words, though I, I think people are good in school and understand the wisdom and knowledge. You can all do that. I really like to speak plainly. And more than speaking plainly, I like to be honest because there are a lot of things that go on in the youth, in churches, and people don't like to talk about it. They don't like to discuss it. They don't Amen. like to discuss the fact that a lot of youth are dealing with problems, dealing with struggles, dealing with issues. And so there's a lot of secret and private bondage that goes on in church. And we come to church, we pray and we praise, but nobody really ever deals with what's happening. They never deal with the fact that some of us come to church and we praise God and we go back home and we deal with our own personal issues, like low self-esteem. They with our own personal issues, like 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 even sexual struggles. Well, some of us have started in sex at a young age, and we create soul ties. And so we start battling with fornication and lust, and pornography takes over, especially the minds of a lot of young boys and girls. Pornography takes over, and they go they're off into a land of bondage that it's not until after they're so stuck in it that they start saying, I wish I would have never started doing this. And, and, and nobody ever speaks into the lies of you guys and say, listen, that you can be free from that. And, and even more than that, we don't have enough people that will come up and be transparent enough to say, listen, God, I, I dealt with that when I was young too, but this is how God treated me. And that you can be free, and that there is a such thing as I don't have to sing. Somebody say amen. amen. I don't have to sing. Say amen one more time. Amen. You can live life without sin. Say amen one more time. Amen. Okay, I'm going to start walking. If I don't feel like you're not understanding, I'm going to come closer to you. You, you can live life without sin, amen. You know, you don't have to sin. You know, peer pressure is very, very real, but you don't have to succumb to the pressure. You don't have to listen to what your friends are saying. You don't have to do what everybody else is doing. You, you can stand up and be strong in the Lord, amen? amen. You can have your own mind. Past being strong in the Lord, just God gave you your own identity. You're your own person. That There is no carbon copy anybody. There's no duplicate in this room. That Everybody in here has their own identity. Everybody in here has their own purpose. And so God has made you with your characteristics different from everybody else. And so don't be so stuck on trying to fit in with your peers or, or being uh, cool with everybody that's in school and all your friends that when they're doing something, when it, it may be wrong. It may not be wrong, but it still may not be the thing for you. Don't be so, so quick to follow the tide of everybody around you. That God has made every single last one of you young leaders, your young Joshua's, your young leaders, that you have to be strong and courageous. You have to be willing to, to, to follow after God, even when everybody else is wanting to walk away. I heard some of you say, when you introduce yourself, you said some good stuff. And then my man said, you're going to take Jesus in the desert. That sounds like something I always say. I'm going to take Jesus in the desert. But as good as that sounds, I want that to be here. That no matter where I am, because how many know that your schools could be the desert? Amen. Amen. That you may walk into their school and that there's nobody in there that's claiming the name of Jesus. Like you said, you claim, can you still take Jesus to that desert? See, let's not just look at the desert of sand. Let's look at the desert of the spirit wherever you are. It can be in your workplace. You guys may have a job already. It can be at any program you're a part of. This is the summertime. Some of you may not be in school. You may be a, uh, an athlete, and, 
an AAU or any kind of sport? Are you taking Jesus with you there? See, because a lot of times we will say, it's easy, you know, when we're here, we want everybody else, you know, I'll take Jesus with me. Because everybody talks about Jesus when they're around a whole, a whole bunch of believers. Amen. Let's be real with you. Everybody can talk about Jesus when they're around a whole bunch of Christians, when they're around a whole bunch of church folks. We all can say, oh, man, I'm taking Jesus with me. But can you say that we are around 50 people that don't believe like you believe? Amen. Do I get scared then? Do I not want to talk about it because I don't want anybody to look at me differently and say, he's weird. We don't know they're already saying in their mind, he's weird. She's different. You hear what I'm saying? Uh, St. John 6 and, 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 and 60. I'm going to read this real quick. All right, all those that got the smartphones, if you got it, say, I got it. Okay. I got it. All right. 6 and 60. St. John 6 and 60. It says, I'm going to read verses 60 through 69. You read it along with me silently, I'm going to read it out loud. Many therefore of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying, who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, uh, he said unto them, Do this offend you? And what if you should see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is a spirit that quickened, and the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. But Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and you should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. Verse 56 is critical. Listen to what it says. It says, From that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Listen to the question. He said, Will you walk away also? Then Simon Peter answered him and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? But thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Uh, Jesus asked him a question that was very critical. He said, are you going to walk away too? And that's the question that I really want to pose to everybody in here. Are you going to walk away or are you going to take a stand? Are you going to stand for what you believe in? Or does what the world seems, quote unquote, to offer seem more tempting, more better than what God has to offer you? See, what the world has to offer is only temptation to, get to destroy you. It's, it's all false. It's a mirage, it's painted, it's fake. It gets you to hide. If you go all the way back to Genesis, you'll find that there's a story about Adam and Eve. Everybody heard about the story of Adam and Eve? The story of Adam and Eve, the enemy came and he tempted Eve with something that seemed like a great illusion. He said that God doesn't want you to eat this fruit because God knows that you'll be like him. If you eat this fruit, you'll be wise. You'll understand both good and evil. You'll You'll be like one of the gods. And so that's why he, he, he made a desire. He created a desire for her for something that, that was wrong, something that was evil. And, and, and it, it seemed good. It seemed wise at that time for Eve to want it. But it was really a deception. And what he really was trying to do was try, trying to get them to, to destroy their pure conscience. And then they'll, then they'll hide from God. When they ate the forbidden fruit, they hear from the Lord. And you may be saying, well, why, why are you really mentioning this? Why, why would that even be an example? Because the reason the enemy tries to get so many of you to, to, to succumb to evil desires and succumb to say it is because when you give into that, that kind of stuff makes you hide from the church. It makes you hide from anybody that's going to talk about Jesus. It makes you hide from anybody that's godly. Anybody, if you may not want to be honest right now, but if you ever given into a, 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 a temptation or you ever sinned or done something wrong, Whenever somebody that you respected or godly came around, it made you want to hide. You didn't want to be around them. You didn't want to expose that area of your life to them because you knew that what you had done wasn't right. And so the enemy always tries to pull you away by lustful desires. I'm going to just be plain for a minute. The enemy tries to pull you away by different things, which is a big battle right now, like sex or same-sex relations. It's a big struggle in the world right now, and nobody seems to want to talk about it, but but the reality is that there are a lot of young people being deceived into thinking that they were a man born into a woman's body. Or a woman born into a man's body. And that's a lie. That's, that's a lie so big because that's then he's saying that God messed up when he created me. And that when God created me outside of the other 12 billion people he created, he made a mistake. His fingertips got sweaty when he started making me. <laughs> that he, he may be a woman, but he really meant to say that that's a man. Or, or he made me a man. He really meant to say that that's a woman. Or, or he gave me the wrong desires. They'll say, uh, God, God made me like this. Or, or I was born like this. No, you were born into sin. Every single last one of us were born into sin. But you weren't born like that. Because God said everything that he made was good and very good. It was, it was perfect. 
And so the enemy would try to bring in a lie to pull you away from God to say that this is who you are and you can't be around anybody that says that this is wrong. And so it makes people hide from the church. It makes people walk away from what is real. And I want to just speak plain. I want to be honest with you. That is a lie from the pits of the hill. That, that the enemy will always try to pull you away from God because he understands your purpose and your destiny. He understands that there is a call upon your life. He understands that God has something for you. And so he will always try to get you away from anybody that will push you into your destiny. Let me help you with something. Don't be afraid of people that, that may chastise you. Don't be afraid of your parents. Don't be afraid of your youth pastor. Don't be afraid of your man and your woman of God. A lot of times we claim the people that accept our sins, but we push away from people that will say, listen, that's not right. I want to help you walk into your destiny. And so when you push away from those people and you cling to the people that, that applaud your wrongdoing or applaud your sins, you're only pushing yourself more into the hands of the enemy. You're only giving yourself more into the lies of the devil is saying you can never walk in what God has for you. That's a lie from the pits of hell. So the enemy always tries to separate you. Think about it. That's why you don't really, you don't find people close and connected to, to those that want to encourage them and say, hey, that's not right. Hey, man, get it together. That's not right. Hey, girl, you, get, you know we ain't supposed to be doing that. Get that together. Come on. You know, you know, if God don't want us to live like this, get that together. We, we don't find ourselves clinging to people like that. We don't find ourselves calling them our BFFs. Those aren't our BFFs. You know why? Because they're too what? Holy? Or too righteous, or no, the word is they too say. I never understood that phrase. I don't, I don't know how you get too say. Uh, but we push away from people like that. We, we don't, we don't cling to those people. And you never ask yourself why. Ask yourself that why, why, why don't I want to be friends with somebody that wants to see me succeed? Why don't I push in to be closer with people that challenge me and say, hey? you got to do better than this. There's more in you. There's purpose in your life. And listen, it doesn't start when you're an adult. That's another lie. The enemy tries to make you feel like it starts when you're an adult. That's one of the biggest lies ever. That you'll find all throughout the Bible that there were kings, Josiah, the 8, Solomon, the 13. You'll find that God used people that were young, that, that, that weren't mature, so the world would say. They weren't adults yet, but they had the wisdom because they dedicated their lives to God. And because they dedicated their lives to God, God gave them promises that he didn't give some adults. God gave Solomon a promise that he can have whatever he wanted. You don't find it recorded anywhere else in Scripture that God gave somebody the opportunity to say, you can have whatever you want in life. Imagine if God posed that question to you. You can have whatever you want in life. What would that be? What would be your response? What would be your response if God said, listen, I'm going to be the, the genie in the bottle. I'm going to let you rub me the right way this time. If, 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 if you have one desire, if you have one question, one thing that God, I just want one thing, what would that be? I don't want you to answer. I want you to answer here. Don't answer me. But what would that be, the one thing, if, if you can say, God, this is the one thing I need. The truth of the matter is, a lot of us in here won't know. Because we're so focused on the things of this world and not the things of God. We're not focused on the future or the destiny of what God has for us. We're only focused on what's going on right now. I'm going to walk a little bit. I'm, I'm really serious here. We, we, we don't focus on what, what's in our future. We only focus on what's right now. And to be honest, a lot of us don't see anything because we're so clouded by temptations. We're so bothered down. We're so pulled down by temptations of, of this world. And one of the biggest ones that seems to pull young people out of the church is this boyfriend girlfriend. Somebody say amen, please. Amen. Yeah. I just want to make sure I'm not talking statues. <laughs> it's this boyfriend, girlfriend stuff. It's not that God doesn't want you to have companionship, but the enemy will use your desire for companionship or your desire to have that male or that female companion, and it pulls you over into a sinful state, which is that fornication and that lust and those desires that start turning in you. When he pulls you over into one area, please understand how the enemy works. You may feel like it's just a temptation. If he pulls you over in one area, that's only a deception to destroy you in all areas. It is, it, is, it, is, it is always shown up. Here's, here's the thing I want to help some of you. With temptation and when the enemy comes, he never shows up as something that you don't want. Uh, it, it wouldn't be temptation if you didn't want it. How many know that? I, I can't tempt you with something that you don't want because you don't want it. If you don't like chocolate cake, it doesn't matter if I put 15 chocolate cakes on the table in front of you. He said, that's not tempting, because I don't even like chocolate cake. Amen. I don't, you can't tempt me with something that I don't want. So 
So girls, if he's gonna if he's gonna tempt you, he's gonna tempt you in the package of a man that you want. And that man that you want will pull you away because God, that, that's the challenge right there. Because the enemy really understands this. Let me see if they want this man more than they want God. Me and you are left out is the same thing that if he's going to pull you away. He's not going to pull you away for somebody that you don't want. He's going to pull you away for something that looks good to the eyes. She got to be, what, what kind of word do I use for, for cute or bad? What y'all, what y'all say out here? I don't know anymore. What, what's, what's the word when somebody's attracted? Bad. Bad. Okay, so, but, okay, so like she, yeah, she bad. So that's, that's what y'all say? Okay, I don't know. Don't walk me at all kind of crazy words. Okay, so he's he gonna bring somebody that's bad. Then, he, ain't, he ain't gonna bring. He ain't gonna bring restitution. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's be honest with you. You know because that's not the temptation to you, honestly, because you don't want it. But he'll bring something that may be desirable to the eyes to destroy every avenue of your life. And so people walk into areas and start making sins and making mistakes, and they, and they don't realize it until they're so engulfed in it, and they look back and say, "How in the world did I end up here?" And I've seen people that were wise and intelligent and, and star pupils and A plus students and, and focus and they had a drive and they were going somewhere in life and, 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 and college scholarships and doing well. I mean, going to school. I mean, pe people respected them everywhere they went. And then the enemy pulls them over into the land of, of, of sin or, or through a temptation or a desire and one thing destroys it and then a disconnected to this and this is destroyed and everything that's connected to them starts falling and it's not until they almost completely fall that they look back and say, how in the world did I keep you? I, I, I used to be somebody that liked coming to church. I used to be the person that loved God. I used to pray every night before I laid down and went to sleep. Now, I, 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 every time I get so tired, I, I don't recognize I didn't pray until the morning I wake up. I used to have a deep connection. I used to be good at school. I, I, I used to be feel strong. I used to didn't worry about what people had to say about me. I, I wasn't worried about peer pressure and judgment. I didn't care about that stuff. But all of a sudden, I found myself in a place now where, where people say something negative about me, it bothers me. Let's do this real quickly. It says this in verse, in verse 56. We had just read it. Um, it says, from that time, many of the disciples went back and they didn't follow him anymore. When Jesus was just going along with the flow and healing people, you know, nobody had issues. If you study that story, when Jesus was going along, he, went, he was healing people and he was showing everybody love. Nobody had problems with Jesus. It wasn't until he started doing some things that challenged them. It wasn't until he started going against the grain, until he started going against the flow of what everybody else was doing, that people had a problem. They, they started having a problem with what Jesus was doing. And let me tell you something. You only have some of the friends you have because you haven't spoken up and said anything yet. Some of them aren't really your friends, and I challenge you. If you're thinking I'm playing, you can go try it. Try it yourself. You can try it tonight. But some of your so-called friends, if you start telling them, you know what, I'm not doing none of that stuff no more. You're not. Now listen, I'm not. You are, are, I should have been going to the club with you in the first place. I should have been sneaking out and doing it anyways. We ain't doing no more of these double dates. I don't like him. We ain't doing. I mean, I'm done. I'm not doing none of that, you know, that silly stuff. Seriously, you know, stop calling me about that. I really, I really want what God. Try it. If you think I'm playing? Try it. I really want what God has for me, and I really want. To just walk into my purpose in life. I really want to walk into my destiny. And I just don't want that stuff anymore. You will be surprised at how many of your friends stop texting you in the morning. You will be shocked at how many people start saying, um, what are we doing tonight, girl? Oh, oh, well, I already had some stuff I had to take care of. Well, I thought, I thought you was my BFF. I mean, I thought we was best friends forever. <laughs> now I think we're going to be best friends in two weeks. Because the moment I start saying I don't go along with what you want to do, now that I have my own identity and I want to do what God has for me, we're not best friends anymore. So really, we we're only friends because I went along with your flow. But now because I have my own mind and my own identity, we're not as close as we used to be. So was that really my best friend or was that somebody that the enemy placed in my life to pull me away from the promises of God and to get me off focus? Was that really my BFF? Or was it my best distraction? See, we can call her my best friend. Like, oh, my, my best friend, she crazy. She be, she be doing some stuff. I mean, I'm telling her, I, I, I wouldn't do what she do. She, I mean, I'm, I'm crazy, but she crazier. And you start finding your crazy self following her crazy self. <laughs> or guys, I, you know, yeah, he, I, wouldn't, I, mean, I wouldn't do all of that. But the more that you listen to them talk about it, 
Because you may be coming to church and you may have for a moment maybe some small sparkle in your life. You may be there trying to live for God for, for, for just a little bit, but the more you hear these guys talking about how they're smashing different women and sleeping around and they going to this party and they doing this, the more you hear that, the more that desire begins to stir in you. And so the Bible starts saying stuff like this. It says, protect your ear gates and your eye gates. It says, protect and watch what you allow to go inside of your ears. Watch what you, who you allow to speak into your life. Because if you're not careful, it's what you hear that starts creating different thoughts. And it's what you see that starts stirring sinful desires. And so if you'll be honest, if you're not careful, you'll be watching a movie and it can be all fun and games. But the moment the sex scene comes up, it begins to bother you because what you watch stirred a desire on the inside of you. Amen. The man of God says something. It's a wonderful scripture. I love it. Romans 12, 1 and 2. And the second verse says, Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That the only way that I can be changed, the only way I can begin to walk in what God has for me is that i got to start changing here. I can't keep being like everybody else. I can't just follow their thoughts. I cannot keep being a peon, following up behind what everybody else is doing. I, I refuse to just follow the pressure of my peers. I want my own identity. And we laugh at other people for being a follower, but when we evaluate our lives, how much have we followed? Because we hear what the church says and how we're supposed to live, but because we're so, we're so focused on being accepted by our peers, what God has to say really isn't big anymore. I feel like I'm still on some toes now. I'm starting to get excited. <laughs> uh, well, what God has to say is it doesn't really matter to me anymore now because I say that I love him, but what people have to say about me is more important than what he has to say about me. I succumb to the pressure of my peers. But Jesus, when he all walked away, he had to continue on his path. He had to continue doing what God told him to do. And he asked the disciples for wisdom. He said this. He said, are y'all going to leave too? Because a lot of people don't know this, that Jesus had somewhere about a thousand upward toward of disciples. He did not just have 12. If you, know, if you didn't know that, if you didn't know that, raise your hand. If you didn't know Jesus, he didn't have any. Oh, man. So let me tell you, Jesus did not only have 12 disciples. There are so many scriptures that get that begins to reference this. He had he had the twelve right there. Saint Luke began to talk about where he had uh, the other the other seventy also. And in First Corinthians, he revealed that when he came back, he revealed himself to the other five hundred disciples that he had when he came back at the, after he was risen in the flesh. So already you have five hundred some plus. But that's not even talking about plus the disciples that walked away. If Jesus had of, of about a thousand or more disciples following him, and the moment he decided. I, 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 I'm, I'm going to stop making this thing easy. I'm going to start speaking truth. I'll start revealing truth and see how many people stick with me. Everybody but 12 walked away. Everybody. He had over a thousand disciples. And after he started talking the truth, only 12 stayed. And so a lot of us will keep our mouths closed in situations that we know aren't right because we're afraid of our friends that are leaving us. We're afraid of the people that won't call us best friends anymore. We're afraid that we'll wake up in the morning and we won't have a text message from our friends saying, what are we doing today, girl? We start walking in fear. So that's what the enemy wants you to do. The enemy says, you know what? When you go around them, be quiet and just go along because you want to have a friend here. And because you want to be accepted. If you're not careful, everything that you do, you'll start succumbing to society. Everything. When I say every, the, the music that you listen to, you only listen to it because somebody else said the sun was cold. The clothes that you wear, the only reason you wear it is because the people around you wear those jeans. They wear those shirts. They wear those shoes. That's the only reason you wear it what you wear. So if you're not careful, you really will only become a part of your environment. But God wants to affect change in you. That God doesn't want for you to be like everybody else. That God can use you to stand up and say, you know what? I don't have to be like you to be accepted. As long as I'm accepted of my father, you're going to have to accept me. See, what they didn't understand about me is that even when I was in high school, man, I was the one that was in high school. I was a virgin all the way up through high school. I was the weird guy, right? That people don't want to accept. Like, oh, he's weird. <laughs> you know, like, he's you know, like, he doesn't, you know, like, it's weird. You know what I mean? There's so many women around here, dude, and you're a virgin. Like, what the heck is going on but what they didn't understand is that as I continue to live my life for God, that God started changing some things. And what he did is that he raised me up. And I was a leader in every area of my school, so they had to accept me because I was in front of them. And even if they didn't want to look at me, they didn't. They had to look at me because I was at the front of the line. I was at the top of academics. I was the top of the football team, the top of the basketball team, the top of the track team. They had to accept me. You know why? Because God caused me to be so blessed that my haters couldn't say nothing. And the only thing they can say to me is that, 
he thinks he all that. <laughs> you know what I told him? I said, no, I don't think that you think that. <laughs> I know what I am. The problem is you don't know your identity. And so I didn't start having to, I didn't I didn't start giving in what they wanted for me. I, I kept my own identity. I, I remained in my own lane and because I did that, people start coming to me. They start asking, what is it that's different about me? What is it? What is it? Well, 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 why are you different? And even though they didn't want to admit it, I of course you all know, listen, we all had hate, I had haters too. All y'all got haters, right? I had haters too, especially when you start being successful. When your success rate goes up, your hater rate goes up. I'm going to let you know this. You start being more successful, please don't expect more friends. Okay. Truth of the matter is, when you start being more successful, you'll have more leeches around you trying to pull off of your success. And you'll have a lot more fake friends and a lot more people talking negatively about you when you leave the room. Mm -hmm. So all of us want success, right? Like, I want to be, I want to be that. I want to be the leader, but people are always going to speak negatively about you. And I had that, I had the haters, but that didn't change me because even though they hated on me, they had to be honest that when the school boss came out, he was voted most likely to succeed. Why was he voted most likely to succeed? Because the one thing we know about him is that he's not waiting on somebody else to walk in front of him for him to move. He doesn't need somebody to follow. As long as he already had a savior. See, that's where I was, and I wasn't the guy. I was weird, but I wasn't, I wasn't spooky weird. I'm not asking you, to, I'm not telling you to be spooky weird. You know what I mean? Like I was I was weird in the fact that I was different with the Bible call me peculiar, but I was weird in the fact that I was walking around throwing holy water on people and I had my Bible at the basketball game before I went for the live around. Like I, I still was a I still was a teenager. I still lived my life. I still enjoyed it and I still had fun. But God opened up doors for me that no man was able to shut. Nobody was able to stop it. It was a, it was amazing that and I didn't even understand how much God had done until I began to look, you know they say that hindsight is 2020 that when you look back you begin to recognize how much God really did for you. Then I begin to look back and to say, God, I realize how much you blessed me now that I have with my life. Because everybody around me, though they were attempting the same things, they could not accomplish what I accomplished. And a kid, check this out, a kid who was supposed to fail seventh grade and eighth grade. Hear me. I was a kid who was supposed to fail. The only reason I didn't fight, fail the seventh grade is because I fake cried to the principal and he let me get one more chance in eighth grade. <laughs> the only reason I didn't fail eighth grade is because when he was getting ready to flunk me, they moved him out of that school. He went to another school when a new principal came in. They didn't know who I was. <laughs> and so I, became, I, I went from that kid who was having 0.5s. Some of y'all say, I ain't that bad. I told him, that's just ridiculous. <laughs> Now, you see how crazy that sound? I had 0 0.5. I had, I had all Fs and a D. I did have one D. I did have one D. I, amen. I, I do believe this thing is for so I, I, can, I can do better. Uh, I, I had one D. And it went from that to me being out of, out of, out of the nine, it was 896 top males that went to a collegiate program in Wisconsin. It's called Badger Boy State. Out of 896 males, I came in number four. I went from the kid that almost didn't pass twice. I only passed because God moved. If God wouldn't have moved, I would have stayed in middle school for four years. Really probably five, but that crying, that crying helped me out a little bit. You know, I was, I was a good actor at that time. But 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 if, if it was not for God moving when I when I and you may be saying, well, what was it? At least you gave your life to God at young, but because it was at that time when I was struggling, it was at that time where I was at where many of you guys are at, I'm way off. I know it's time to be here. But many of you guys are at is at that place of where I, 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 I mean I want to be saved, but I want to be cool too. Now, how many of you guys know Don Demi Reynolds? You ever heard of music by Don Demi Reynolds? Okay, uh, I see a couple of hands. He he got he has a real song. I mean, go download it because I guarantee when all y'all start listening to it, you're like, man, I think that might be where I'm at. The, the verse of the song says that he says, Lord, I'm splitting two. Part of me loves the world, and the other loves you. He said. So God, what do I do? Because I want to stay saved, but I also want to be cool too. He said, I, I, God, I know I'm not a fool. I know eventually I'm going to have to choose. And I don't want to lose my ticket into heaven and the chance to be used by you. Because if it's God that I'm after, I can't continue to serve two masters. And before something happens, I got to turn it all around because you know you can't just have your cake and need it too. And it's real easy to stay on the fence 
is still want to be used. <laughs> hey, let me tell you this. He, he said something to my friend. He said, and it's, you know, it'd be cool if we could love the Lord and still go do our own thing, but, you know, you got to be white or black. So the song says there's no gray area. I just want to ask you this, like, where, where in your life, where in your life is there a gray matter? Like, where is there a gray area? Like, begin to evaluate your life and say, God, I, I, I really don't know where it is in my life that I've really made a conscious decision. Where is it that it's black and it's white? Have I arrived at a place in my life yet where, God, I'm not playing anymore? Now, I really want to give you everything I've had. Is it 100%? Or is it zero percent? He actually says in the Revelation, this is three verses, people don't like to talk about it. He says in Revelation 3, verses 15 and 16, he says that uh, I, I, I would that you would be either hot or cold. Uh, he, uh, Jesus is speaking, the words are in red. Whenever you see words in red, you always know this, this is the Savior talking. He said, I wish that, that, that you were hot or cold, uh, that you were either cold or you were hot, or you, that you were hot or you were cold. I, I wish that you were one of the two, but because you are lukewarm, I spew you out of my mouth. Now, people don't understand what that means. That word spew is the same word that is translated in the Greek vomit. Okay, that might be kind of tough for some people. But whenever something is vomited, that means that it didn't sit well in your stomach. It, it wasn't preserved. Something was turned in it. it. It wasn't fresh. It wasn't pure. And so you got to look at yourself and say, where have I allowed myself to expire? Where have I allowed myself to turn? Is my desire for God pure, or do I only pray when I need God to move, or do I only pray when I need something from God, or do I really pray because I want to be closer to Him? Do I really want to be saved? See, that's really where a lot of you guys are at. Like, you, you battling in there. Like, do I really, I mean, do I really want to be saved? Because, I, yeah, I mean, I, I love God. I mean, because I was raised in church, duh, I know about God. But at the same time, I feel like I'm too young. And I feel like I don't want to, what, what, what am I giving up? And it hurts my heart because in the city where I'm from, I see so many times, almost every day, where there are young people dying. In every day, in every day activities, a young girl, 19 years old, just died on Sunday making a U-turn. I mean, we all want to drive this stuff and make a new turn. You know, you get in the car, you turn, you make a new turn. That's the case. The car makes a new turn. But the car stands out of control, slaps the tree, spits the tree, brushes the brain. And so at 19 years old, three days before her 20th birthday, she's gone. Lively and viable, but the question is, does she know him? So there are young people dying. A young girl that was in the neighborhood got shot 12 years old. She wasn't meant to get shot, but she got killed by a straight bullet of two men trying to shoot one another, and she happened to be walking the crossfire. Young boy coming home from basketball practice, 16 years old. He gets shot in the face with a, with a, with a, with a shotgun because it was a gang initiation, and the gang initiation was that the, the, the kids had to shoot the first male they saw. So a kid that does no wrong, come on, that's where I practice bullet bag, getting off the bus, he's walking down the street, and before he knows it, it's dark, somebody runs into him, puts a shotgun into his face, and they shoot him. But check this out. The only reason he lives is because he had a praying mother. He had a mother that was saved, and she felt that danger was coming and began to pray, but he refused to give his life to God. How many of us are in that place where we're relying on our parents' salvation? Like, y'all yo, can do all that, but I ain't ready. See, I just seen a whole lot of smiles pop up when I said that. Yeah, my yeah, mama and pops, you know, they, they be talking about the scriptures and Romans and all that, and Jews and all that. That's, that's, that's the Israelites, thank God for it. But, but I ain't, I, I'm, I'm not really there yet. Okay, so if you're not there yet, what if your life was going tomorrow? What if God came down here and said, listen, you know what? Today was the last day. That's it. I'm done dealing with it. I gave you too much time. I raised you in the church. And still, after everything I've given to you, still, after I provided for you, still, after I saved you, still, from all the danger, seen and unseen, you're still alive, and yet you don't love me. Yet you have not chosen to put, put me above the gods that you serve this world. See, a lot of us don't understand this, but there are gods in this world, and a lot of us serve them. You know that your clothes can be a god. You know that money can be a God. Let me tell you something else. Your friends can be a God. 
Because whenever you obey above the voice of the Lord, then becomes your God. And so if my friend says I should sleep with him, but the Bible says fornication is a sin in the eyesight of God, and I choose that my friend's advice is bigger than God's advice, I then just pledge my allegiance to my friends being my God. Somebody say amen. And make sure you still awake. If I gotta keep walking back here, I can keep, I can keep walking. I can keep walking this time. If I gotta keep, I, I, I just want to stay close because I have to understand that 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 whatever I pledge my allegiance to, whatever I allow to be my my voice of reason, whatever I listen to, that becomes my God. That becomes what I allow to control me. And once I allow something into me and it begins to control me, it will control my life. And people don't understand this. The moment you walk out of the hands of God, you walk into the hands of the enemy. Truth of the matter, y'all, is that, can I just be honest? We're in a war. God says he wants souls. Satan says he wants souls. You know when you're on one side, if you're on God's side, or you're on Satan's side. There's a dream right here. It's an amazing dream. The man woke up out of his dream. True story. The man woke up out of his dream, Satan. And in the dream, he said, I was in a dream, and I was standing on a fence. And as I was standing on the fence, I saw Jesus on the side. Now, he was an atheist. He didn't even believe in Jesus. But he said, the moment he saw the man, he knew it was Jesus. He said, I'm standing on the fence. I see Jesus on this side, and I see all of his disciples. And I see Satan on this side, and I see all of his disciples. He said, the amazing thing about Satan was, Satan wasn't what I pictured him. I thought Satan would, Satan would be standing there with a pitchfork, and he would have red horns and a tail that could come up and slap you in the face. He said, if that wasn't Satan, he said, Satan, he had swag. He was smooth. He was seductive almost. He was, he was, he was, he was, he was calm. All right. <laughs> Amen. Just Amen. 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 Even Jesus laughed at something, y'all. Okay. Uh, but he said, he's standing on the fence. He says, Jesus on that side of his disciples. Jesus, pure. Satan is on that side of his disciples. And Satan, he looks, I mean, he's smooth. I mean, he just, I mean, he just, uh, who, who y'all young girls like? Uh, August Alcina and Chris Brown, whatever. Who y'all like? You know what I'm saying? All right. All right. So he's smooth. This, I mean, he, he calm, and, 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 and Jesus says, who are you going to choose? He says, he's looking, and he said, he's just standing there. He looks down, he looks back up, and all of a sudden, all of Jesus' disciples, they're gone, and all of Satan's disciples are gone, and it's just he's standing there, and he kind of looking like, who, who are you going to choose? He said, I can't make a decision because I'm, I don't really believe in Jesus like that. Um, I'm not a devil worshiper. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, and some people don't understand that. Like, I don't, I don't love the devil. You know what I mean? I mean oh my God, you make me sound bad. I don't love the devil. I just like the stuff he has off. <laughs> so he's standing on the fence. He says, as he's standing there, Jesus disappears. Satan walks up and he grabs his hand. He says, oh man, thanks for choosing me. Satan snatches away. He said, hold up. I didn't choose him and I for darn sure didn't choose you. And Satan said, yes, you did. The fence is mine. That Satan owns everybody that straddles the fence. He says that if there is no, I'm, I love God, but I, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do me right now. It's either I live for God or I live for the enemy. And so if I remain on the fence, that that fence is the enemy. That's that's Satan's territory. And so if I'm gonna, if I wanna serve the fence, that that I just chose who's the captain of my team. I just chose who I dedicated my life to. And so many of us get stuck in that place. Like, so many of us, that every single last one of you, if I was to ask you, you would say, there's no way I'm a devil worshiper. I don't like, I don't like Satan, or I don't like believing, like, all that dark stuff. I don't, I don't want to do that. But at the same time, I don't necessarily want to give, like, give my life really, like, all the way to God because they be doing too much. <laughs> because for some reason, you felt like in order for you to be saved, you had to be their kind of saved. Like, I got to walk like you and talk like you and, and I got to wear a suit like you and a dress like you and I got to say amen at everything and I got to walk around the street saying hallelujah every three seconds. Because you know? there's some people that I don't want to be that kind of say. I'm going to be honest with you. It, it's some people that's just, man, you be honest, you, you meet some people that are the weird kind of say. Like, like, like you, you're, you, you're, you're just doing, you just doing the most. That's what we say at home. You're doing the most. That means um, you, you can't even have a regular conversation because everything goes back to Jesus. No, and listen, please hear me. If anybody loves Jesus, oh, I love Jesus. I mean, call me the Jesus lover. If, there, if, there's, if there's such a thing as that loves Jesus too much, that's me. 
But at the same time, I understand that God wants for us to have a blessed and prosperous life. And God wants for us to enjoy life. So it's okay for me to talk about other things that I like, like basketball and sports and hanging out. You get what I'm saying? And so God still wants for you to have fun. God still wants for you to enjoy. But God wants for you to choose who's going to be your master. How many of you guys are bowing down to idols? Just because you see everybody else do it. See, that's what happened. We all heard the story about the three Hebrew boys, right? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It was in Daniel, the third chapter. The three Hebrew boys, the reason that they got persecuted was because they stood up when everybody else bowed down. They said, listen, I, I love all y'all. I don't got no problem with everybody. Listen, I, I ain't saying I'm better than you, none of that. But I refuse to bow down and serve the God that you serve because I know that my God is the true God. I know that my God is the high God, and they got persecuted for that. And so many people read stories like this, and they get afraid, and they say, I don't want to be that. I don't want to get persecuted. I don't want to be outcasted because of what I believe. But it was only because of what they believed that they got elevated, that they got promoted, that they got blessed. And so many of you guys, you want God's blessings, and you want to be promoted by God, but you don't want to stand up for him. See, the Bible says this, to whom much is given, much is required. So God says, if I'm going to make a full-time commitment to you, the requirement is, and the covenant is, you have to make a full-time commitment to me. It can be a partiality thing. It can be that I'm saved on Sundays, Sunday through Tuesday, Wednesday through Saturday, I'm kicking it. How many of us are saved on Sundays besides, and none of the rest of the days of the week? Don't even raise your hand. I don't want you to raise your hand. But on Sunday, you're in a praise thing. I see some praise, and I'm a prophet, so I can see some, I see some praise dancers in here. <laughs> I see one of y'all playing the drums, you know, pray, just praising the Lord, all that good stuff. And, and on Sunday, Monday through Saturday, whole other life. But, but I love God. And Jesus says this. He says, listen, let's validate your love. If you love me, St. Luke 15 chapter, keep my commandments. St. John, forgive me. If you love me, keep my commandments. So if I love God, my only way to prove that I love him is to show him my action. And so you will look at me and you will say, if I come to you and I say, listen, I love you. I love you. I, listen, I promise you I love you. And then every time you needed me, I wasn't there. Will you believe my words? If every time I come to you and I say I love you, but then I always walk away and, and, and there's, no, there's no connection to you, I can see you hurting, I can see you in pain, and I'm not there, would you believe that I love you? I can, I'm never there, I never call, I never talk. We never talk at all, but yet I say that I love you. And so many of us live that life where we don't talk to God at all. Like our prayer life is this, like, God, I just thank you for this day, Lord, and just bless me, Lord, in Jesus' name. That's more than some of y'all. Some of y'all say, uh, uh, Lord, bless this food in Jesus' name. And that's all the prayer you do. <laughs> it's grace. Grace. I mean, I, mean I, I, I see some people and they battle and they struggle. The only reason, only way that you can grow in your life with God is that there has to be a certain level of prayer like that. There has to be, we, we, we have to get back to the basics of, of reading our Bible. Do you see what the enemy destroys you? Listen to me. The enemy will destroy you like this. You can watch TV for three hours and stay awake. I asked you to read your Bible for 10 minutes and you fall asleep. No, I told Fossey, read your Bible, I fall asleep before you ever read it. I mean, honestly, if, if, how is it that I can watch TV every day, but I can't pick up my Bible? I can't even read. Can I, I mean, can you at least read the scripture? The Holy Bible gives you the scripture every day. Can you at least read the scripture? We can't do that. You know why? Because the enemy has our focus so, so off. It's, 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 it's so off. And a lot of you don't even understand that you're in a war. You don't even understand that the enemy is attacking you left and right. I mean, it's left and right. The enemy is trying to pull you out of the kingdom of God because he understands that if you really tap into your purpose, if you really tap into your destiny, that there is nothing he can do to stop you. That you would be so blessed, you would be so on fire, that even if you tried, you would already have lost the battle because your fire for God would burn out anything that he has. And so that's why when you're this young, listen to me, that's why when you're this young, some of you guys have been through so many attacks. That's why some of you guys have seen stuff like broken marriages. Some of you guys have seen some stuff going in your home that wasn't godly and it wasn't right. And you've seen family members fighting. You've seen a lot of anger, a lot of animosity. Why is that you were young and you saw so many things go wrong? Because the enemy sent his worst spirits, his worst, his worst demons to try to destroy you before you tap into your potential. In Daniel, the third chapter, when I talk about the three Hebrew boys, the Bible records that they were in between the ages of 14 and 17. They were teenagers. When they, did this, when they stood up, so don't say because you're too, you're too young. They were 14 and 17, between 14 and 17 years old, and they're facing death. 
And he stood up for the presence of God. And in between the ages of 14 and 17, the king sent his mightiest soldiers to bound them up and to take them into the fire. He, he would have got the strongest soldiers that he had and sent them to grab some kids that was 14. Now, anybody, you've got to be smart to understand, like, it didn't, it didn't take all of that. I mean, it was, it was 14. You know what I mean? I, I mean, you, you don't have to be the strongest, but if you're 20 and he's 14, you pretty much already confident that you're going you gonna to win. I mean, that's not even really a fight. It's unfair. But the king sent his, his strongest soldiers. Why would he do that for kids that were 14? Because he wasn't looking at just still. He was looking at the God that was on their side of their potential. And so the enemy would do the same thing that in your young years, that he was seeing attacks upon attacks upon your life because he tries to destroy you before you ever tap into what God has for you. He tried to destroy you before you even know who you are. The, the crazy thing about it is this, and, I, and this is a big battle, that people, especially young, young men and women that come to church, is that they, they know their struggle before they know the purpose that God has in their life. If I were to ask every single last one of you, and I can guarantee you it would be very few in this room, what is, why do you feel like God has set you on this earth? What are you here for? Not, not here just to drift and, and to, to float along the sea. That's, believe it or not, that's not what God made you and created you. You're different from the people around you. Why? Why? Is, why what, what, what are you here for? What is your purpose? What is your destiny? You won't be able to tell that, but right up top, you'll begin to, to, to focus on the things in your, in your life that you can't get rid of. The struggles, the temptations. Why is it that I can see all the negative, but I can't see any of the good? That is a demonic perception. That's what the enemy wants to destroy you with. I'm going to just cut to the chase right here, y'all. Listen, God wants for you to be free. The ministry that I move strongest in is to help people get free is in deliverance, in the ministry of the prophetic, and the ministry of healing. I see too often, too often, young people that are, that are battling with things that, 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 I guess years ago, it only the adults used to battle with. It's like, you, you'll see young people, hear me, that are seven and nine years old, already in different people now. That, 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 are, that are teenagers and already can't stop having sex. They're addicted to sex. Young girls that will allow themselves to sleep with any man because their self-esteem is so low and the only reason they feel like they're worth something is when a man lays down and comes inside of them. I'm being straightforward right now. Because I really want to help some of you. That is, the, the, that is a distraction and an attack of the enemy to destroy you here. Way before you're even an adult, by the time you're 18, by the time you're 20, by the time you're 25, you're so bottled down with the destruction of life and with the things that you battle with that you can't even walk into the freedom of God. You don't even you don't even know how to praise God and be free. And some of you guys, that's the reason you feel like you can't, like, I don't know if I can live safe because I don't know if I can stop doing that. I hear what a lot of young men and women are. I don't, can't, I don't know if I can be safe because I don't know if I can stop sleeping around. I don't know if I can stop my struggle. I don't know if I can stop watching watching those movies late at night. I don't know if I can get off the internet late at night. I don't, I, I, I don't know. And social media makes it so available for everybody that you get stuck in it. Listen, let me tell you something. Please, please hear me. Because I've had a chance. I, I, I'm connected to, I've, I've met some people. I, I'm talking about I got friends that are in the NBA. I got some friends and some people that are connected in high places, some people that are millionaires. And please don't think, because people got money and they smiling in your face that they're happy. Please don't think, because people only will show you what they want you to see. The truth of the matter is, how many know what Instagram is? Okay. The truth of the matter is, a lot of people live their life like Instagram. What it is that they'll take their picture and they only show you what they want for you to see. And so they'll take a picture, they'll crop out the bag, and then add a filter. And so when you look at it, you're like, oh, that's a nice picture. <laughs> that is a nice picture. But if you saw the original picture, you say, man, they look the best. That's bad. That wasn't a nice picture at all. But thank God for filters. <laughs> thank God for rise. Thank God for pro. I mean, thank God for contrast and brightness. I mean, you're able to, you're able to, you're able to, to, to go in there and add a filter on a picture that looked terrible. So now you look like you team light skin and you like you got long hair. And you, I mean, you, I mean, you look real, you look, you look real nice because the filter came in and it changed 
what first appeared bad, what's really negative and made it seem good. So the person living on the outside only sees what the person on Instagram wants them to see, so their life appears like they're blessed. But you don't understand those same people that go home and cry at night. They go home and cry themselves to sleep because they don't have peace here. And people are looking at them on the outside and say, man, you blessed. And they can't, even, they can't really receive it because they know, like, you feel like I'm blessed. But when I go home, I don't feel blessed. When I go home, I feel bad. And I don't recognize it until a lot of times you guys recognize this. You don't really recognize the sin and the struggle that you have until, until you're in church and the spirit of God come in, comes in. And then you recognize, I need to stop doing this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for some of you that have given your life to God and, that, and, you, and, you, and you promise God, God, I'm going to stop this, I'm going to stop that, because you feel strong while you're in the church. And then the moment you leave the church, all of the attacks come back upon your life, and you give up and say, I don't think I can do it. Yeah. I made a commitment. I gave my life to God when I was in church because everybody else was clapping and everybody else was saying they was giving their life to God, and so I did it out of pressure, but I did not make a conscious decision to say, God, I give you my life. Don't, don't be an Instagram Christian. That's my new name. Don't be, don't be a person, you, you only come to church and you show people what you want them to see. But at home is the real picture. Please don't filter up your life. Listen, that's not going to help when you get here. Please don't come to church and filter up your life and, 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 and paint a picture like you know you're doing everything right and you know everything's going well in your life. And you know, truth, truly, deep down inside, you are not happy and you are not at peace because you still have struggle. That is, that is really what I, I, I want to minister on today. And I want to pray for however many I have to pray for today. But, but I, I really want you to be free. And there are some of you that have some, have some strong battles. Strong battles in your flesh, strong battles in your confidence and your self-esteem, strong battles in who you are and identity. When the enemy tries to come in and lie to you and tell you that you like the same sex, and you start believing it because you hear the voice so much. And because you hear so much, you start thinking that they really mean. And so we confuse the enemy's voice with our voice, and we say that that's our identity, but that's not you. That's not you. It's the voice of the enemy that comes in and tries to deceive you. And tries to destroy you. Listen, it's a lie. It's a lie, guys. It's a, I've seen the bands of the, of the enemy broken off of, off of the lives of people that have battled this. Even my very own sister who was lost and she felt like she was, she fully lived the life of a lesbian. She fully gave herself over into it. If they had not even for the power of God that had come in and, and broke her, she lived it for years. I ain't talking about you know, some of us go through a confused state when we do it for six months or a year and we're trying stuff, you know, whatever. You know. She completely thought that she was that, that God made a mistake. And God completely freed her. And she didn't recognize, hear me, she didn't recognize how bound she was until she got free. And that's the same testimony I had. I used to be a man that struggled with womenizing or pornography and masturbation badly. I struggled with it badly when especially especially when around 18, 19, I struggled with that bad. And God came in one day and freed me. I was 20 years, he freed me. I've been freed this for now over five years. But when he came in and he freed me, I mean, he, he broke it off of me. And I didn't realize how bad it was until I got free. And I looked back and I said, I really had a problem. But while I was living in it, it was normal life. And I looked at the people around me to say, well, if they're still battling with it, then that means I'm wrong. Because if somebody else can say that they have the same struggle, then I don't feel so bad anymore because they have a struggle and I have a struggle. Now I have somebody to struggle with me. And it goes back to the old saying that sin loves company. Misery loves company. Destruction loves company. And I want to pray for you. Listen, I don't want you to be ashamed or afraid, but... Um, I really want to pray for those of you that are battling in that area. Battling with struggles with them, with struggles with in, in sexual morality, struggles in pornography, masturbation, struggles and issues like that. And I know this may seem like it's a very, very real uh, topic. And, and let me tell you something, it is real. And then one thing that I refuse to do, and I made a promise to God, I said I refuse to go to places, I know what I meant, so I refuse to go to places and to see people battling and struggling in sin. Battling and struggling with 
with these struggles deep within them, and I do nothing about it. I am not going to just come and preach a pretty message. You hear good, we shout, we pray, and say, oh, that was good. He said something good, but when you leave here, you go back home, and you have not been affected. You have not been changed. Because everything that I said, it tickled your flesh, but it didn't make you change. It didn't, it didn't cause you to be different. See, I want you free. Let me just make my own personal problem. I want you free because I understand how it feels to be bound by that stuff. I understand. I understand what it feels like to look at your life and to say, I feel like I'm supposed to be further than this, and I'm not, and I don't know why. It's because I've given myself over to the hands of the enemy, and I thought it was only one area by my desire, and he destroyed every part of my life through my desire to want to do wrong. I begin to pray this prayer. God, help me to stop liking the things you don't like. Because James' first chapter says, if man, the man is drawn away and enticed of his own lust. It talks about temptation, sin is continued. When a man is drawn away, he's enticed of his own lust. And so a lot of us will be honest enough to say this. The reason I do this stuff, the reason I give into it is because I want to do it. Ain't nobody make me. Ain't nobody put a gun in my head. It's because I had a desire. I was curious. I gave into it. And then when I gave into it, it seemed like it was a cycle that I could not bring myself out of. And so this, if this, if at this time, Bishop, if this is okay, if I can, at this time, okay, at, at, at this time, if I could just just pray, pray for anybody who's who's saying who's up the way. For anybody who is saying, you know, I have some areas in my life that I want to be free from. I, I have some areas in my life that I want to be free from, and I have some struggles in my life that I, I, I need God to break off of me. And I'll be honest, if God doesn't break it off of me, I don't know if I can walk through walk with him. Don't worry about the people sitting around you next to you. Let me be honest with you. A lot of people around you have the same struggle. They can wait for you to have the courage to get up. If there's anybody, you can come forward. That's if, you, if there's anybody. Because God wants to be beautiful. If there's anybody else, before I start praying, I just want to make sure. If you're free, that's good. You praise God for it. Hallelujah. I thank God that you're free. But if you're not, what I don't want you to do is to stay there. And you know that when I go back home, I still have battles. And the crazy thing about it is, you could be in a household where your parents are saved, and they don't even know how deep the struggles you have. A lot of you guys up here like that. My parents, my parents don't even know what I'm battling with. They don't even know what's, what's happening here. I, I smile when I'm around them because really I'm ashamed to tell them that, 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 that your little boy, your little girl, and exactly what you think it is. That I, I got some struggles, some issues inside of me that's, that's, that's deeper than you can ever imagine. And so this one, I, I'm going to be honest. Sometimes I'll be honest with you. Some of you guys, your parents should have been more honest with you to tell you this, that they battle with some of the same things you're battling with. And because they were not broken free before they conceived you, what was in the blood the lines came to you. And so God wants to set every single last one of you free from the generational curse you didn't know you had. I spoke with my, my, my parents when I got saved and God finally set me free. It wasn't until God set me free that I was honest enough to tell them what I, what I had battled with. And when I told them what I battled with, they began to tell me what they struggled with. And I said, why didn't you say something? We had an honest conversation. I said, I would to God you would have told me, you would have warned me, let me know what you battled with so that I would know how to pray. I wouldn't know what to watch out for. But because I was blindsided by the enemy, it knocked me off my balance. And God, God, listen. Now, I'm not going to tell you God can. God will and wants to say God wants to. Because it makes people start questioning, like God, can can you love can you love me like this? I got too many issues, I got too many battles, I got too many struggles. Can you love me like this? And you don't understand that God is still standing right there, saying, "You don't know how much I love." You don't understand that the only reason I I sent my son to die because I knew you would have those struggles, and the only way you could be set free was if he was beaten for you, was if he was bruised for you. God wants to set every single last one of you free. Every single last one of you. I'm going to 
Um, no, well, that's, that's create a line. I'm going to come, come, come down the line. I'm going to create every single one of you. I don't, I don't want to do anybody. Let's create a straight line. There's two more that's supposed to be up here. No, I'm not going I, 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 I to. I used to call people out, but I realized that if it's not free will, they still are not change. And so I don't want to. I don't want to force anybody. I don't want to force anybody to come up here. They hear there is still two of you that that that, say, that, that needs freedom. It doesn't matter age. Age doesn't mean anything. The truth of the matter is, I have a struggle that I need to be free from. Come here, man. God. I have a struggle that I need to be free from. And at this time, I'm going to get ready to start praying for you guys. But at this time, don't don't even get a focus on him. Just in your heart, you can close your eyes in your heart and just start start speaking to God. Let him know that you surrender. God, I give. This, I give this up to you. I've battled this too long. I've struggled with this too long. God, I give this up to you. I give. I don't want. I don't want it anymore. You have to make that confession to God for yourself. I don't want it anymore. It is something that I battled with God, and I feel like it has taken possession of me against my will, and I don't want it anymore. I want to be free. I want to be free. I pray to God that you guys will be a generation that will make the adults embarrassed. That you will stand up and you will move in the righteousness and the power of God so strong that it will even cause conviction to come upon your parents to say, I need to come up in my conviction. I need to come up in my relationship with the Lord. Lift your hands. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you right now, God, for this man, this young man, this young Joshua, God. I speak strength into his life right now, God. And I pray, God, as I lay my hands upon his head, God, that everything, God, everything of the enemy, stand down and get you ready for everything of the enemy. God, that, that the enemy tried to place over his life, God, every destruction, God, every stronghold, my everything the enemy tried to place over his life to destroy him. God, I rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. God, I break the hands of the enemy off of his life, God, and I speak that he's free, every stronghold. God, all sexual immorality, God, all lustful desires. God, everything that the enemy would try to put in his mind and make him feel like he can't be free, make him feel like, God, that he can't be released. I release him right now in the name of Jesus, and I destroy the very voice of the enemy that's upon his life, and I speak, God, that he will be a man of God, and that the calling is still upon his life. God, there's still a call upon his life to walk and to be a teacher of your word. God, I pray right now that you would make this Joshua, make him a young Caleb, God, and a young Joshua to stand up and be strong, God, that he will stop caring, God, or what anybody has to say about him, God, that he'll stand up with boldness and conviction and say, God, I've already dedicated my life to you, but God, I'm asking you to do something right now, God. Free me from the things that are not like you in the name of Jesus. Yes. I break it off of you in the name of Jesus. I break it. I break it off of you in Jesus' name. There it goes. I break it. I break it, you lustful desire. You lie. You lie in his identity. I break you right now in the name of Jesus. He is a man of God. He's a man and a man of God. With a pure heart and a pure conscience in Jesus' name. The pure heart and a pure conscience. Oh, Shenan Rotomon Sokoboshia. God says, Son, I've already given. I've already given you warning. I've already let you know the things you need to let go of. And so God is saying, even as you make this commitment, now you see more of what you've been praying for coming forth. You've been praying to God and asking God about the ministry that's upon your life. You've been even been asking God about some things and, and, and life choices where to move and the schools. And so God's going to begin to guide you and be a voice into your ear to lead you where you should be because you are not ordained to be anywhere. There is a time and a season. There is purpose upon your life. And you, unlike other people, cannot just pick up and go. You have to spend time in prayer to hear my voice. Speak it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And you won't be praying right now. I don't, I don't want you to so much focus on here because I'm, I'm going to pray for everybody as long as you. I promise you. Not, not anybody else. But I pray right now, God, for this year, God, lift your hands, God, that you will be completely free, God. I see the hand of the enemy trying to deceive her and you trick her mind, God, and made her believe that she's something she's not. Oh my, and I speak that she's completely free right now in the mighty name of Jesus, God. I break every hand of the enemy that was upon her life. Oh, she come on, so oh, she the enemy. Oh, I hear God's, I feel God's heartbeat for you, God. I thank you right now, God, of the enemy. God will not have possession of her anymore, God. But God, that she'll be able to rise.
I just love the lifestyles of her parents, God, and there will be more, more in her, God, and there will be more in her, that there's already purpose and destiny from the day that she was born. God, and I see the enemy trying to attack her, God, even in her childhood, God, when she dealt with some sicknesses and some things, God, when the enemy was trying to kill her, but God, I thank you right now, God, that you protected her from the enemy, God, and that he could not destroy her. I speak, God, that she's free, that she's free, God, that she's free. I command the very hand of the enemy to be released off of your life. I break every time, every demonic oppression, every satanic orchestration, every devilish entanglement. I, I, I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. I break it off of you. I break it off of you in Jesus' name. I break it. I break it. I break it. There it is. I break it. I, you found a tormenting spirit. I command you to be released right now in Jesus' name. Oh, she will not lose her identity. She will not lose her identity. God made her be a beautiful woman. Oh, God, I bless you right now, God, that you bring her mind, God, that battle, that battle in her mind, God, that battle, God, but she's trying to push against you, God, she's trying to fight. But God, we need your supernatural help to come in, God, and to free her from the very bondage of the enemy, God. And we thank you, God, that even right now, God, that you're taking out every thought that the enemy placed inside of her, God, to try to confuse her. I cancel confusion in the name of Jesus. I cancel confusion, God. And I speak this. She, she yes, God, she will be one of your bold ones, God. She will be one of your bold ones, God, but she won't have to preach. But God, her lifestyle, her lifestyle will be able to draw people to you, God. Her lifestyle, God. That she won't have to minister from a podium, but God, she'll be able to minister in her lifestyle evangelism. We thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Lift your hands, God. I thank you right now for this, your daughter, God. As I lay my hands upon her head, God, where the enemy has been trying to bottle her down, trying to destroy your will in her life, God. And she knows, God, she knows that there's a purpose in her life. God, she knows you have something special for her, God. I even sense, God, that there are gifts, God. That God, even music and ministry gifts, God, that you have placed inside of her. Her, God, so the enemy has been trying to destroy her, God, trying to get her to take her gifts away from you, God, and into the world. But God, we will give the very thoughts of the enemy. God, we speak right now, God, that she is free from all demonic orchestration, God, every satanic oppression, God, that will try to be upon her life, God, all of the demonic infestations, God, with lusts, God, and different desires trying to come in, God, and make her feel wrong, God, and trying to draw her away from the church, God, when the enemy, like, even in the season, trying to make her feel like she didn't want to come back to church, God, trying to make her feel like she didn't want to keep coming because things weren't changing. She wasn't seeing things change in her life and in her family. But, God, I thank you right now, God, that you're breaking the hands of the enemy off of her life, God, and that she's being free, God, that you're freeing her right now in the name of Jesus, that the enemy will no longer have possession of her soul, but, God, her life is rededicated to you, God. And so every struggle that she used to have, God, we speak no more, no more in Jesus' name, God. That her heart, her heart is being purified even now, her heart. Her heart, God, her heart. Help her to forget it, God, to let it go. That her heart will be healed in Jesus' name. She's seen some stuff, God. The things that weren't right. But God, we rebuke it right now in Jesus' name and speak that she is free. She is free in Jesus' name. Amen. Lift your hands, God. I thank you right now for this, your daughter, God. As I lay my hand upon her head, God, I thank you, God, she has a beautiful voice, God, and a gift. God, that there are so many other gifts that are be within her, God. But one thing I know, God, is that those that are gifted, the enemy fights against the most. And so, God, I pray right now for this, your daughter, God, that her life will be fully surrendered to you, God. She already knows you. She already knows the way. But, God, she still has some struggles, God, when the enemy tries to come in, God, and tries to trick her. And make her feel like Shinaman Soroko Hoshia. And make her feel like she wants to go out and try some of the things in the world. God right? wants to go out and, and get involved in some of that stuff because the enemy has been, been trying to make her make it seem like it's a pleasure and try to try to make it seem like it's funner on the other side of the glass. But God, we repeat those thoughts right now in the name of Jesus, God. We speak a commitment, a holy commitment into her life right now, God, for the purpose that you have for her, God, so that she'll be, God, that voice that you'll use, God, to draw your people into worship, God, that she'll be that voice, God, that you'll use to draw your people into praise, God, that even the songs, God, that are in her heart, God, 
God, they will come forth, God, and she'll begin to wake up in the middle of the night, God, and she'll just hear songs in her ears. God, and she'll wake up with a notepad and begin to write, God, the very words she has spoken into her spirit. God, and she'll hear songs of worship. God, and she's, this is a worship. God, not just praising, but a worship for God, a woman, God, that will be able to usher in your presence, God. So the enemy has been trying to destroy that gift, but I counsel it right now in the name of Jesus, because God, I speak to thee. That she's free from all struggles of this world, every desire of this world, God. I thank you right now that as you're coming into our heart and into our mind and you're changing, God, every ill gotten desire, God, every thought implanted by the enemy, God, we cause an abortion right now in the name of Jesus. God, we call that thing to be poured out of her. We cause it now to be poured out of her. I break it off of her mind. Freedom is hers. Freedom. Freedom. Oh, oh there it is. Peace. God, the act of the torpor will leave her life, God. That she would experience your peace in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Father, I thank you right now, God, for this your son, this your servant, God. God, even as I laid my hands upon him instantly, God, I heard there was purpose on his life. That there is purpose. The thing that you didn't want to hear, God, that there is ministry. That there is ministry upon his life. So the enemy has been trying everything. To destroy this man. I mean, if it's not one thing, it's another. Attacks, different crazy desires, and illicit and immoral behavior. Things, things just popping up. God, even struggles, God, with the enemy trying to flood him off and drinking and smoking, God, by his peers and the people around him, God. But I destroy it right now in the name of Jesus. God, I destroy the hand, the hand of the enemy off of his life, God. And I speak, God, that he is free in the name of Jesus. I root out. Every foul spirit in the name of Jesus, God. And I speak right now, God, that he is free. Every whip free, God. Every fiber of this being, God, is restored, is renewed, is revived. I thank you, God, that the enemy cannot have control of his life anymore, God. I thank you right now, God, that he is not confused by his identity, God. I thank you that he's pure in his mind. God, he's pure in his mind, God. Destroy those desires that he doesn't want anymore. Destroy, God, destroy the desire that he's ashamed of. Rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it. I rebuke it. There go Romosha. Yebeki come and say the hasty man. Oh, Rebalian say the heshi satalai monsiku. Suta Bahan, this leve heshi amand. I break it off of him. Yehara mando bokosia. Meshian sele. I command you to go. I command you to go right now in the name of Jesus. That he will be free. He will be free. He will not have to privately battle. Oh, I end this war right now in the name of Jesus. I destroy this battle. I speak that it's already won. That God makes him more than a conqueror. God already causes him to triumph in the name of Jesus. Cause him to triumph. That he won't battle with it, God. Hey, shame. So, God, even from his belly, I ask you, God, to purge him. Purge him. He feels it. Say, that the purging of the Holy Spirit comes upon his life right now. God, that you make him everywhere clean and everywhere whole in Jesus' name. God, that you will begin, God, to reach through even in this prayer life, God. God, that the purpose and the call is upon his life, God, that he'll stop running. God, he'll begin to accept it and to say, God, whatever you have for me, it is for me, God. It is for me. And my life won't be successful until I say yes. I want to experience the peace that I've been asking for until I just say yes, God. And so I pray in this audience, just say yes to your will, Lord, yes to your way. God, I'll obey whatever you say, God. I'll listen, God. Just let me hear your voice and I'll listen. Shame my God, if this is supposed to be the youth minister right here, but the enemy tries to destroy him, God, tries to pull him away, tries to make him feel like he can't do it, that he can't hold out, that he can't live you, but I destroy every thought of the enemy right now. I destroy it. I destroy it. In Jesus' name, he is free. He is whole. He is renewed. He is revived and refreshed in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. God, I pray for this, your daughter, God. 
got a pure and sincere sweetheart, God. You already know. You, you already got, you already evaluated her heart. God, her heart is pure and sweet, God. She has a sincere heart. God, and the only reason she puts up a stone wall sometimes, God, is because she doesn't want to be hurt. God, she's afraid of being violated by letting people into her personal space. And so, God, I pray right now, but God, this is your daughter, God. And I break every hand of the enemy. God, that tries to destroy her mind, God, that tries to make her feel like she can't walk this thing, God, that tries to make her feel like she can't live for you, God, because it's just too hard. It's just it's too much coming against me. It's too many things happening at once, God, and I don't know how to handle it. I hear her praying saying, God, I feel like nobody is there to encourage me, God. I feel like nobody is there for me, God. I feel like I'm alone. And so, God, I destroyed that, God, help her to see. God, that you never left her alone. God, that you was always there. That you were always there. Even when she sat in her room and she cried and said, God, do you hear me? God, that you were even right there. God, that you never left her alone. That you never left her alone, God. God, and I thank you right now, God. That any hand of the enemy, any attack of the enemy, God, any seed that he's planted into this good soil, God, we uproot it right now in the name of Jesus. God, and we speak that she's free, God, and that your Holy Spirit will have free course in her life. God, I already see, God, that she has said yes to you. But, God, she's wavering in that decision. But, God, I pray after today, God, that today will be a day that 100%, 100 percent, 100 before. It's a forward march in my life for the Lord Jesus. I'm moving forward. Forget what people have to say about me. Forget what happened in the past. I don't need no more fake friends. God, I thank you right now that her mind is strong. Her mind is strong, God. God, I destroyed God right now the desire to be in the to place in her, God. After she said yes to you, God, it seemed like just all kind of crazy desires came up. God, the enemy was speaking. She thought it was her voice, but it wasn't hers. It was the enemy, God. We destroy it right now in the name of Jesus. I break it off of you. I break it off of you. I break it even now. I command the voice of the enemy to be silenced in her ears. God, and that she will hear you and you only, God. This is another worship of God. I thank you. I thank you for this. This is another worship of God with gifts. Oh, Sheraman de Vekis. God, that you can use her voice as a trumpet, God. God, a voice to lead your people, lead your people in the worship and the praise. I thank you, God, that she has the voice, God, that you gifted her with, God, to be able to sing a song unto you. And so, God, I praise you right now, God, that her gift isn't left out, but God, that you would exalt her in due season. God, as she continues to walk with you, God, that she continues to be obedient to your voice. God, that there is, there is giftings, God, I even see she has. God, a door that I want to be open for her. God, a door that she wouldn't believe. But God, all she has to do is continue to say yes. And that's why the enemy tried to destroy her. Because she couldn't see what was coming in her future. But God, right now, I speak consistency, God. I speak faith into her life. That she's free and she'll stand strong. She'll stand. She'll stand in Jesus' name. Amen. Put your hand. God, I thank you right now, God, for this, your son. God, this is another one, God. Thank you. A lot of people see it. He plays and he laughs a lot. They don't understand. He has a lot of wisdom. And he ain't stupid at all. He's seen a lot of things and he knows what's supposed to be happening. And so God, I thank you right now. God, there's an yes in this situation. God, there's a 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 yes in this situation. And I thank you that he has gifts, God. I thank you, God, that he participates, God. I see gifts and athletic abilities, God, in football. I see it upon his life. But God, I thank you, God, that that's not the focus, God. The focus is his yes to you. Oh, shots in my vacation. God, and while he's been focused on his gift, God, you've been trying to pull him into you. God, and there's even a call upon his life for him to walk in the stead of his father. To walk in the ministry of his father. That there's ministry. Oh. He's a natural born leader. He's a natural leader, God. He's a natural leader, God. But he doesn't even understand it, that even when he walks, when he's not walking in your ways, God, that people follow him out of you, God. I pray right now, God, that you begin to use this vessel. Use him now in the name of Jesus, God. God, to bring, to begin to bring people back to you, God. I pray right now that everything that is not like you, God, 
that is cleansed out of his heart. God, every lustful desire, I break it out of him right now with the name of Jesus. Every struggle, every stronghold, I break it out of him right now with the name of Jesus. I speak, God, that these struggles will not have the best of him. God, I speak that pornography will not run his mind. But God, that his mind will be free, God, that his mind will be renewed. And the enemy tries to destroy his mind and his thinking. But God, I thank you right now, God, that he is pure. Purified. No man less she come on so. God, that he can hear you. That he can hear you. God, and it's not too early. He's not too young to begin to accept what you have over his life. He's not too young, it is not too early, God. But if he begins to say yes, God, the things that you will allow to come to, to full manifestation in his life. This is a prosperous young man. There's prosperity connecting him, God. Not just money, but God's success in whatever he puts his hand in. God, so I pray right now that the enemy will not destroy him. That the enemy will not destroy him, God. But God, that the spirit of praise will be stirred up in him, God. That he will find himself excited, God. Just excited to praise. All, all of a sudden, God, where, where he, when he wouldn't have lifted his hands, God, he's, he's just lifting and praise. He's, he's excited, God, to be able to give your name the glory and the honor. I break the hand of the enemy, God. I speak that he's free, that he's renewed, that he's revived. In Jesus' name, that the enemy will not destroy him, that every person, ah shit, every person that's connected to him, God is not supposed to be connected to him, God. The people that are going to try and pull him into sin, I destroy those connections in the name of Jesus, God. I pray that you give him the strength to walk away from those friends. Those friends have been put in this life by divine, by, by demonic orchestration of the enemy to try to pull him away from the kingdom. But he will stay. He will stay in Jesus' name. This is the prodigy child. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 God, I pray for this your daughter, James. I pray for this your daughter, God, that she would be completely free. God, and that there would be a yes in her spirit, God. But God, there was still a battle within her, God, to say yes. She's, she, that's where the way is, God. She wants to say yes, but God, she's hesitant. She's hesitant because she, she doesn't know if she's ready, God. She doesn't know if she can really hold out, God, and so she battles, and it makes her not even want to listen. I mean, even try to make her feel like she doesn't want to come to church. She doesn't want to go listen to what the pastor has to say, God, because he's been speaking in her ear, and it makes her feel like, I even hear her just saying, I'm just tired of this church stuff. But the enemy really tried to make her just give up. Now, even her being here was a blessing. Ah, ah, God, that this was divine orchestration, God, that she had to come here. Because, God, after today, God, that this would be a new turning of season in her life, God. That this would be a new season, God, where she's going to begin to change. God, you're going to deal with her, God. And even her mother is going to look at her and say that there is something different in her, something. That even her attitude, you know, people say she had a bad attitude, God. That you'll come in right now, God. And you'll cleanse that attitude right now, God. You'll purify it right now in the name of Jesus, God. And you'll give her the sweet, the sweet spirit of peace. God, in the spirit of love, God, and I destroy, God, even the negative characteristics that people try to speak over her life. God, oh, shit, I destroy every thought. God, when people told her she wasn't going to be anything, God, when people told her she wasn't going to be successful, God, when people told her her attitude was going to get her in trouble, God, and that she wasn't going to be anything in life, God, and she even started believing that, God, when she started behaving more negatively, because she started saying, God, they're going to keep speaking negatively about me anyways. I might as well do what they're saying. But, God, I destroy that right now in the name of Jesus. I destroy God. I speak that she's free. That she's free, God. That she's free, God. I speak freedom into her temple, into her life, God. Every thought of the enemy that tries to come in, I destroy it. God, and I speak that she walks in the freedom of you, God. And that she will not battle. She will not battle with her thoughts. She will not, she will not battle with those same late night thoughts. God, when the enemy tries to come in and tries to tempt her. This is one of the ones that when the enemy tries to pull her, God, in the sexual immorality at a young age. But God, I destroy, I destroy it right now in the name of Jesus. I destroy it. I destroy it by the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I destroy it, God. And your power will do this one. I pray that your power will come in, God, and we evict the very hand of the enemy and, and his presence out of her life, God, that she'll be completely free. Freedom in this atmosphere, God. Freedom in this temple, God. Freedom. Freedom. Freedom, Freedom God. God, I pray that she will begin to accept your will. God, when she, she, she gets here, when she leaves here, God, when she's by herself, when she's alone, that she will be able to sit there and say, God, 
asking him, God, if you can just help me, God, I'll do whatever you want me to do. God, I thank you, God. And even though everybody else does it, God, there's still a purpose in my life. God, you haven't changed your mind yet. And you won't change your mind, God. You won't change your mind. Oh, my Lord, let the Lord who say you are high. Show you the hay, you set a man, say the key for a man, say, so, 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 so. Thank you. I think that she's free. That she's free in Jesus' name. And I pray for this God, your daughter. Pray. I pray, God, that she is free. God, that all of the, 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 the attacks of the enemy, God, that have been upon her life and upon her mind, God. It be destroyed right now. I speak God. I see I see that she's very intelligent, God. She's wise. God, because of that, God, she thinks a lot. She thinks a lot. She overthinks and starts worrying, God. I destroy this spirit of worry right now in the name of Jesus. And I pray, God, that she will begin to learn to accept your will, God. Oh, God, this is another one, God, with great purpose on her life. Lord, I bet they will say, God, you will share your mind, God. There's purpose upon her life, Father. Oh, my God. Oh, God, her steps are already ordered. And the enemy tries to pull her away, God, from people she connected with and family and ministry. But God, we count that right now in the name of Jesus. It's not going to happen. It is not going to happen. Her ministry is to stay connected. I see her. I see her encouraging the young women. Encouraging the young women that they can stand strong. That they can continue. She's saying, God, if I'm going to do that, God, I need for you to help me. Help me to stand strong, God, and to keep my mind, keep my mind pure. Oh, there was, I speak no more battles in her mind. No more battles in her mind. Not everything. My baby, I canceled the hand. Every time she says yes, the enemy tries to come in and make her battle and tries to remind her of her struggles and things she used to battle with. But God, I destroy it right now in the name of Jesus. I speak, oh, can't tell my beyond so shit. That she is free in the name of Jesus. That she's free no more, no more, no more chains and bondage, no more tug of war. I cancel that tug of war right now, God. I speak that she's walking in 100 fold, 100 fold promise. God, that she loses, God, the people that are around her, God, that she'll stand. I see her standing, God, when everybody else is quiet. I see her standing as hands lifted. God, and hands of worship, hands of praise. God, I see her standing, God, even when she felt like she was standing alone. God, when nobody else in her family would stand with her. I thank you right now, God, that she was a, one of the only children, shit, come on, see, that said yes to you, God, not break. God, that she will continue to say yes. God, no more shay, I'm on Keep hearing that God is going to use you out of your family. God has gifted you. There's, there's, God has gifted you with something different than the rest of your family has. And even though you have some family that already that already know the Lord in ministry, but there's something different. There's a, there's a special gift and a grace upon you. I thank you, God, that she is a leader. That she accepts that role. That God, God there's purpose upon my life. There was something that you have for me to do here, God. And God, I ask that you, you will continue to keep her in freedom, God. So that when she launches forth, God, if the darts of the enemy won't try to come and knock her off of her course. But God, God, I still have a pure mind. I destroy every private battle in the name of Jesus. I destroy it. I destroy it. It does not have rest here. It does not have rest here. I, I, I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. I cancel it. I even cancel the desire for it, God. God, if she'll wake up tomorrow morning and say, I don't even want it. I don't even want it. Even, God, even I sense the Ahaman de Bogosia. God, but there's, there's kind of been a void in her heart, God, because she wanted some companionship. And she, and she, and she wanted a, a male friend to love her and to be there for her, God. But God, I destroyed that, God. When she says, God, I don't even want it. God, as long as I have you, God. God, I, I trust that they will come in its time. God, that they will come in its season. But God, I want to be committed. I want to be faithful to you, God. So when it comes, I can handle, God, what it is that you have for me. That she does not need a boyfriend to be fulfilled. That she's fulfilled her own. God, you made her complete. Yes. You made her complete, God. 
You made her complete on her own, God. I pray, God, that she'll stand in the completion of you and the Holy Spirit, God. This is the one, God, I even pray, God, that you, I, I pray for another feeling of the Holy Spirit in her life, God. Yes. Yes. Let us fill in the Holy Spirit. Right now, God, let your power go more holy shit up on the scene. Show say Kennedy in peace, the man the robo shit. Man the by sebo. Let your power fall fresh on this. God, that is my prayer, God. I pray that the Holy Spirit and your anointed God, God will fall, God, double portion upon her right now, God. God, but she needs to be powered and strengthened, God, with the purpose that you have upon her life, God. God, well, she won't have to second guess, am I feeling? She won't have to second guess, God, are you there, God? She'll know, God, that when she hears that voice, and when she wakes up in that morning to pray, she hears that voice, she'll know it's you, God. She'll know it's you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lift your hands, God. I just thank you right now, God. Even before I lay my hands on her, God, I already feel this love and compassion for God, I thank you, God. God, even as I was ministering, God, I couldn't take my eyes off of her, God, because I understand, God, that you were highlighting her for a reason. Show no the whole kind of man said, tell it on me, you see, I'm not there. Show no co pikra man said, hey, yes, she, I'm not here. I hear you the apple of the Lord's eye. The Lord said, I've set my eye upon you. You were the one. You were the one that gave your life to God as a little girl, and people thought that you were playing. Since then you have some struggles and some battles, but God, I thank you right now. God, that she is completely free in the name of Jesus. Everything, every leech that the enemy sent to suck the life out of her. God, I counsel it and I knock it off in the name of Jesus. God, and I speak right now. God, that there's a, there's a, there's a blood transfusion going on. Say, come on, say, you on the wall, uh, and that Jesus himself has given her life. God, that she'll stand strong, God. That she'll stand strong on what she believes, God. That she'll stand strong in you, God. That she will not waver, God. That she will not waver. God, but that she'll be strong in you in the name of Jesus, God. I thank you. I thank you, God. God, that there's purpose on this one, God. This this right here. God, that this, there, there's a pure and a sincere heart in you. It's sincere, God. That's, that's, that's what you want. That's, that's what you cherish about her, God. That, that, that the one thing she doesn't play with is her heart. She's, she's for real when she says yes, God. And so I pray right now, God, that you would strengthen her for the journey, God. Strengthen her. Strengthen her, God, for what you have for her, God. That she can stay in, God. So she can say, God, I want to do this thing, God. I want to walk this thing out. But God, I don't want to have a battle within me, God. I don't want to have a total war within me. God, as I say yes, God, I want to continue on that path, God, to say yes every bit, every part of my being, every fiber, every morsel. I'm saying yes to you, Lord. I thank you. Oh, yeah, my devil, God, that inside of her is a war cry. God, that you even made her a prayer warrior. Share. She saw my name. God, that there's a war cry within her belly. I hear she has the voice of a trumpet, Lord. I pray, God, that from her belly she would release unto you. Oh, God, that when she wakes up in the morning, God, that she'll release a yes in her spirit, God. Yes. 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 There he is. Yes, God. God, I feel even surrendering to your will even now, God. And she said, God, I should say yes to you, God. Whatever it is that you have, whatever it is that you need from me, God, I say yes in this moment. I say yes in this hour, God. And I'll offer my gifts back to you. I'll offer my gifts back to you. God, whatever you tell me to do, this is an obedient servant. Whatever you tell me to do, God, I'll do it. Oh, God, thank you, God. She's a jewel. She's a jewel. She's a jewel. Oh, let me all run. Say, let me ask. She claim when she buys the whole. She's a jewel. God, because there's a yes in her belly. There's a yes. Oh, there's a yes in her. God, God, she gives herself away to you, God. I pray that she will withhold nothing. Launch her into her destiny. God, I pray right now that this will be the time that even the vision that you've shown her, that it will begin to come to pass. 
God, when you told her, God, that you would use her to speak to your people, God, I pray that right now, God, that, that yes, God, we even stir it, it will permeate. God, I pray that your fire, God, that she already has said yes to you, God, that the fire of your anointing will begin to stir in her even now, God, that she'll be on fire for you, God, that she'll be on fire, that she'll be on, she'll have a fire that no man can put out, that nobody can stop, that no trash can, can, can stop, God, but the fire will be forever kindling. Forever burning, a flame, a flame, a flame in her spirit. I speak that again, a flame, a flame in this praiser, a flame, a flame, oh shit. God, that out of her mouth will flow words. God, they cut like a sword. Say, Monday, Shay, I'm on Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Yes. Yes. I pray, God. I pray that she will bless her. And she has said yes to you. But I pray, God, that everything. But, oh shit, God, that the blessing of Israel will be upon her life, that everything that she touches will be anointed to grow. That everything she lays her hands on has to be possible. Every business idea, every thought and ministry, everything she attempts to do, even her schooling, God, that she will move forward and yes, God. God, that you will provide a way, God, for the things that she can't afford. I pray that you will begin to send people into her life, God, to bless her, God, to move forward, God, in the things that you have for her, God. I speak that no door shall be God, I pray, God, as I hear you saying, whatever she sets her heart to do, God, you're going to bless her with the way to do it, God. In Jesus' name, I thank you, God, that she's free and that she'll be an example. God, you will use her. And when a woman of God says yes, that this is what I am able to do in their life, that you will use her as an example. That if my child says yes to me, I'm able to turn the whole situation around. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Lift your hands. God, I thank you for this, your son. This is your son, God. Regardless of what the enemy says, this is your son. Regardless of what the enemy says, God, this is yours. This is yours. This is your son. The, the enemy tries to make him question that. Tries to make him question that. that is, that's what the battle is, God. He, he said yes to you, but it is like a battle, like a tug of war, God. I, I feel there's some confusion, God. The enemy tries to come in and tries to destroy him. But I thank you right now, God. I thank you, God. That he would stand up as a young Caleb of God and say that we can do this. That he would, strength, he would stand up in strength and in victory. God, I pray, God, as the, as the command that you gave to Joshua, that he would be strong and very courageous. That he would be strong and very courageous, God. I pray everything, God, that is, that is in him that is not like you would be rooted out right now. Rooted out now. Oh, re la mano, shea, so. See, in all my day, he saw. See, the battle is not his yes. He, he'll be willing to live. The battle is him, him getting rid of those desires, God, that are not like you. Oh, the enemy tries to come in and make him feel like he's going to walk away because the desires are too strong. I destroy it right now in the name of Jesus. I destroy it right now. I destroy the thoughts of the enemy. God, I destroy every temptation and attachment that is upon his life, God. I speak. God, that he'll walk away. God, he has some people. God, he has to separate himself from. God, give him the strength. God, to step away from the people. God, that don't mean him any good. To step away from the people. God, who's plain. God, he's connected to some people that are plain. They, they're not living for you for real. God. And so I pray, God, that he'll have the strength to say, God, I made a decision in my mind. God, and I have to obey, God, what you're telling me to do. God, I'll walk away. God, if it means I gotta separate from some people who don't mean my future good, I'll do that if I have to. Oh, shit, I'm on so God, you got some more caution. God, that you will bless him, that you will bless this musician. That you will bless this musician. I just get the music, show more than that answer. The very time I'm so whole shit, carry your boss, so come on, she got. Have me fully tap me even the drums. God, that he will use his hands, God, to bring praise unto you. God, and I pray, God, that he will live to the full measure and stature of the game. He will allow Jesus to come and be full measure and stature of the game. He will allow Jesus to come and be full measure and to change every thought that is not like you into your thought, God. He will purify this. Purify him, God. I pray, God. I pray, God, for an impartation of grace upon him. Oh, shit, no, come on, you let Lord, God, do this. 
Freedom right now in his mind, God. Freedom. Freedom, God. He won't have to look at those pictures, God. He won't have to look at that, God. He won't battle. He won't battle with that. He won't look at those videos, God. That he'll be free from that. I speak. Hey, Shea, my little I root it out of him in the name of Jesus. And I speak from his belly. God, that he's free. He's free, Shay. Oh, show. He's free, God. Freedom. Freedom in this temple. Freedom in this temple. Freedom, God. Never to return, God. I speak. God, even when the enemy tries to pull on him, to try to reel him back in, that he'll say, I made a decision that I'm giving my life to God and I stand upon the decision that I made. Freedom here. Freedom. Freedom. He doesn't want it anymore, God. You are released. You are released in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lift your hands. Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for this, your son. I thank you, God, for this purpose upon his life as well. God, I thank you. I thank you, Bo Shedder, one so Kobo Shia. Tell him, said, be free to take the day. See, let's hear him do a good job. Raise him up a child in the way he should go. Shedder, I'm the Bo Shekai, your mom, tell him, see, I'm not here. God, so when the enemy will try to pull on him, God, to pull him away from you. I rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus, God, and every foul spirit that has made this temple this building for us. We command you to go right now in the name of Jesus. We command you to go, and we speak that this young man, this young man will, will, will grow. God, I even, I even see, God, you've given him wisdom, God. You've given him wisdom and maturity beyond his years. Wisdom and maturity beyond his years. The people that know him say he has wisdom and maturity beyond his years. And so, God, I thank God as you give him with that, God, the enemy will also try to come in and take every gift that you planted to the people, and to your people, God, and to his being. And so, God, I thank you right now, God, that he's free. God, he's free from the, the tainting of the enemy, God. I, I, I pray right now, God, that he will stand strong, God, and that his yes will be full. Full, full surrender, God. This, that is my prayer for this day. That, that, that is his, his surrender will be full. Share now, man. So, call your man, the enemy, Sarah and Lemon so bocoli, I let Seter Zigra no bocoli and said, The better I creep on this question. He'll be free and he'll be free completely, God. That, 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 that is my prayer, God. He'll have a complete freedom. Freedom in this temple, Lord. No battles. No battles. The enemy's really been trying to fight against him, really been trying to destroy his mind. Because you've given him with wisdom. You've given him with intelligence, God. Spiritually and naturally. He's naturally intelligent. God. You've given him with that. So the enemy is trying to destroy this. So God, I speak, God, that he's protected right now. God, I pray that you would, you would build up a stand against the enemy when he comes in on the flood. God, I speak a host of angels around him. God, for protection, God, and I speak that within him. And even from his belly, God, that freedom. God, freedom will come. No shed on my sword. God, freedom will come, God. So that, so that out of his mouth, God, he would use him, God, to speak words of wisdom, God, words of counsel into your people. Yeah. Hell, yes, shut up, my nigga, coach. That you use him as a young counselor, as a young voice, as a young voice to stand up. That he'll be the one that's not ashamed to stand up and say, that's not right. That he'll be the one to stand up and say, let's get it together. That the purpose of his life will be fulfilled. The purpose on this night will be fulfilled. I thank you. I thank you right now, God. And I pray a special blessing, God. You continue just to bless him, God. He will be raised and brought up, God, instead of you, God. And, and, and in fear, God, in, in, in a reverent fear, God, of you. A reverential fear of you, God. He'll say, God, I won't go off into this stuff because, God, I love you enough. 
not because I'm afraid of it, because God, I love you enough, and I'm thankful enough for the sacrifice you paid for me. God, I won't allow myself to be pulled away by the attacks of the enemy. I thank you for right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take your hand, brothers. Thank you right now, God, for this this young man. God, I pray, God, is every attack of the enemy, God, upon his life. God, I pray, is every every attack I'm going to try to make him think uh, uh, about his struggles, about the issues. God, I free him right now. God, many struggles, many demonic struggles. struggle. Uh, the enemy will try to put in his life. God, I thank you right now. Uh, there was freedom in this temple, God, and I cancel uh, any sexual immorality. God, any thoughts that will try to come. God, I try to tempt him, God. I, I said I said that he's been dealing with some temptation, God. He's he's been kind of giving into it a little bit, God. But I pray right now, God, his strength will come back, God, that he'll be poured back, God, that you'll reel him back and that he'll be able to stand. God, not only stand, but stand strong. God, I don't want him just to be barely standing. But God, I pray that he'll stand strong, God, in what it is that you have for his life, God. I pray, God, right now, that he will not be tainted. And I also thank you, God, that he has not nation out of some more God, that he has not given away his purity yet. I pray, God, that he will continue to stay pure before you, Lord. God, when the enemy tries to pull him in, God. God, he's given into some temptation, but he hasn't gone all the way. And so, God, I pray right now, God, that he'll be able to restore what he's lost, but God, help him keep what he has. Help him to stand strong, Lord. Help him to stand strong, Lord. To stand strong, God. There was great purpose of one in his life. That's the reason he's here. So, God, I pray, God, that the blessing, God, that you'll be able to use him, God, that you'll use him as a voice amongst his friends and amongst his generation. God, that you'll use him, God, to be that voice, God. He won't have to walk away from his friends, but God, you'll use him to encourage his friends to turn it around for you. And you'll use him, God, to become the leader of his friend group. God, and to draw people to you, God. To draw people to you, and I counsel God. Any thought the enemy has put in his mind, any any attack, God, any any lie the enemy has told him that he's struggling with he's in bondage. I counsel him right now in the name of Jesus and I speak that he is free. Every bit of hold in the name of Jesus, every way complete, every way complete, God, that there is no struggle in his mind. God, there is no struggle in his mind, God, that he will be free. Let me even understand. I have him to understand this, to just accept the things he doesn't understand. I I I, I sense he had a lot of questions. A lot of things he doesn't really understand, God, that's, that's happened in his life, God, and that's happened in his family's life. But God, I pray, God, that he will have the heart to say, God, I trust you. God, and I know, God, that there's something special for me in your kingdom. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, hands, God. I thank you right now for this, your son. I thank you right now, God. I cancel the low money for Koshia. I cancel the attacks of the enemy off of his life, God. Devil, you are a lie. That is a lie. I counsel it right now with the name of Jesus. I speak God, that there is no struggle in his identity. That there is okay. No reban sus lebahaya bokoshia. She and the Bahas, the Kikanama, you so Gushel and the Hinka, Pesatai, Somo, Uraman de Hikiamanso. God, that there is no struggle within him, God, but he's free in the name of Jesus. I break it off of him, God. I break it off of him, God. Every struggle and sexual immorality, God, I break it off of him right now in the name of Jesus, God. I pray that he'll be able to stand in righteousness and holiness, God. I destroy it, God. I destroy it. I destroy it, God. I thank you, God, that you compelled his heart to come up here. God, because of the purpose that he has on his life, he cannot be bottled down, God, with the temptations and the struggles and strongholds of the enemy. Free his mind, God. That's where the battle is. That's where it is. That's where it is, God. Free his mind. Free his mind, Ole. Free his mind. That when he returns home to his environment, God, he won't, he, he won't even have a desire to return to go back to it. God, that you're freeing him right now, God. That you're freeing him. Oh, Sharan de Levante de Yesida. God, you're freeing him from the struggle that his, his father dealt with. Shotaman said, Bakai Moshe. You're freeing him from that struggle. Oh, I break it off of him right now in the name of Jesus. I, I speak that you are free. And I command every foul and tormenting spirit 
They will try to cause that lie to become true and try to pretend every imitation spirit. They try to make it seem like the left and it wants to relax to lie dormant. I destroy it right now in the name of Jesus. And I speak freedom into this temple. Freedom in his heart. Freedom in his mind. Freedom. Lift your hands high, son. Oh, my Doroshe Levi, the Bilkosiama. God, come into his being right now, God, and you are everything that is not like you. Everything. Now. Oh, yeah, yeah, so no more shake out, man. So, yeah, she did me, he summon the boy. Yeah, yeah, go, show the boy, come on, see, I'm on this year. There is he ran out of the his son, so go, shake her, and yet, oh, so go, and yeah, say, Kevashia. Hey, there, there, oh, I break it off of you. I break it off of you right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, do what you have to do in this temple. Do what you have to do in this being, God. I thank you, God, that you're setting him free. I even feel that spirit trying to tug on, but it can't stay. It has to be released. I command you to leave right now in the name of Jesus. Freedom. There, there it goes. There. Yes, Lord. Freedom. 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 Zayim dihika isomosha. Freedom, God. Freedom. No shame. Oh, freedom here, God. Freedom here, God. That this battle would end. That uh, this battle would end, God. They don't understand the private struggle. Oh, they don't understand the private pain, God. He smiles in public, God, but there's a private struggle. God, and I rebuke that off of his life. I rebuke it off of his life in the name of Jesus. I, I rebuke it off of his life. And I command you that you are released in the name of Jesus. You are released from the bondage of the enemy. Yes, there it is. Thank you for your peace, Lord. Thank you for your peace. Oh. Thank you for your peace, Lord. He ain't this in a long time. Thank you for your peace. To you even sell his heart. I pray that you'll hear me, God. And you speak to him, because you do speak to him. Yeah, you do. You speak to him. And you may not be aware of it, maybe. But he don't hear it. You speak to him, God. I pray that you'll be aware of that voice, God, and he'll listen. And he'll listen, God. Let him hear your voice, God. And then he'll be obedient in Jesus' name. Amen. Lift your hands. God, I pray right now, God, for this your vessel. God, and I destroy every thought and every flame and every demonic orchestration, every devilish, devilish entanglement, every, every satanic encroachment, God, every debacle of the enemy, God, that tries to destroy this temple that tries to destroy this man. I rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus, and I speak that he is Root out that lying being. I speak, God, that there will not be a tug of war in his identity. But God, that he'll know who he is. And he'll stand up as a man of the Lord. God, in every struggle, baby, so Oh, wow, God. He's one of the ones that started struggling when he was young. Every struggle that the enemy inflated, whatever happened when he was six years old, God, the enemy inflated into it. I, I destroyed that right now in the name of Jesus. I break that off of him. I break it off. I destroy it. God, even the memories of his past, God, even what he's already experienced, God, I pray right now that I rebuke it out of him. God, that his temple is revived and refreshed and renewed. God, I pray over his life. God, that everything that's not like you, it has to go. It has to leave in the name of Jesus. It has to go right now. Yeah, it is. So shit, come on. So I break it off of you. I break it off of you. I break it off of you. Oh, I am I am a who can it. Say, run the belly, I'm so sick. I break it. 
Yeah, come on, Holy Spirit. I'll break it off. Yeah, you gotta go. Yeah, release it. Release it. Romo she yamanso. Yo mo mo she. Yo me no fight and hold on to it. Just let it go. Romo de de shia. Break it off of you. She yamanso man de de shia man. Oh, release it. Romo she ka. She man de bo ho she ka ya. Say God, release it. Release it. She yam de she man de bo she. Yeah, that's a strong hold. Romo man de de se komo. By the power and the name of Jesus Christ Himself, devil, you are destroyed. In this land. You are evicted, and I command you to go back to the pits of hell. Which you came. Every contract and covenant that was signed over his life, we destroy it right now. It is annulled. It is nullified and void. We destroy the contract over his life. When we speak God, that He's free. That He's free, God. And that you continue to stay on this path. God, that you won't let him go. No shit, come on, say the body again. God, she been there with him. God, even when he wanted him, he wanted you to leave him alone, God. He, he wanted you to just let him go, God, so he can just walk into it. God, so he can walk into the things he had desires for. And to the sense of God, you wouldn't let him go. God, you wouldn't let him. You kept bothering him, God, because there's purpose. Oh, shit, y'all mind this secret, y'all mind so. There's purpose upon his life. There's purpose. And so everything that is not like you, God, as I lay my hand upon him and upon his heart, cleanse him. And I pray, God, there it is, I pray. I pray, God, for forgiveness. I ask you, God, that he will have forgiveness in his heart, God. Help him to release what happened. God, I help him to release what happened. I, there, is, there is some unforgiveness here, God. So strong, almost, almost hatred. God, I pray, God, that you will release all unforgiveness, God, off of his life right now in the name of Jesus. Release it, God. You can't move forward if you don't release it. Help him to let it go, God. Help him to let go of his past. Help him to see that now is the time for him to walk with you in his purpose, to walk in his glory. The decision he has to make, God. He has to, God, in his, in his own prayer time, he has to say, God, I release it. I let it go. I hear God say to me, son, I, I, there, there, there is a purpose in the life, but in order for me to do what I need to do in you, there has to be a yes in you. There has to be a yes in your spirit. God says, you're still battling with some illicit, illegal, and moral behavior, with some desires that are not like me. But God says, I can come in and I can see everything that is not like me that's on the inside of you. But God says, son, the thing I need for you to do, the one thing I need for you to do, I need you to surrender. I need you to say yes. There's purpose. There's purpose. I feel it. I feel that purpose. is there. But that lying devil, that lying enemy wants to keep you alive. And I destroy it. I destroy it. Oh, hey, come on, son. I destroy it. Even, even, even the curiosity. I destroy it right now in Jesus' name. Now that he'll stand strong in it. That he'll stand strong in God. Oh, I put my life into this prayer for this man, for this young man, this day. for the purpose, God, that you have graced him with, God. And for the, the call and the task upon his life, God, that has to be such a surrender, God, and that has to be such a place of purity and conscience with him. And with his heart, God, and I pray, God, that you will continue, God, continue, God, to work on him, God, that there is more, that God said there's more I want to do with you, that you need to spend some time with the Lord in prayer. God said there's more that I want to reveal to you. There's things that I want to reveal to you that I cannot reveal to you with just a word, even in a prophetic word. There's, God said he wants to spend time with you, that as you spend time with me, he'll reveal some things to you. And he'll counsel, he'll rebuke, he'll destroy those struggles in your flesh. He'll give the even the things that seem like they've been there so long, they won't leave God destroyed in Jesus' name. Amen. Lift your hand. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for the sincerity in this heart. God, for her sincerity. Oh, yes, Lord. 
I am, I, I'm, I'm excited about this one. I feel your excitement about her, God. God, she's already submitted. She's already said yes, but God, she just wants to be. She just wants to be. Oh, and I feel, I feel her cry. I feel her cry. I feel her cry because she got prayer about this before, God, but it seemed like it didn't work. Mmm, I know. Say, I'm going to share here. No, I'm going to so share here. I'm going But God, I speak that this is once and for all in her life. I speak that the line of scrimmage is drawn. God, the enemy can never cross over into this territory again. God, I speak. God, in every thought that the enemy tries to implant in her mind, God, that we evicted right now in the name of Jesus, we cast it out. And we speak that this woman of God is free. She's free to worship. She's free to praise God. She's free to do it, to walk in the purpose that you have for her life. We speak, God, that there will not be a tug of war, God. That this will not be that, that tug of war season anymore, God. But finally, she'll feel herself walking in her purpose for you, God, walking in her destiny for you, God. And there won't be, there won't be a struggle, God. That, that's what she wants to get rid of. She wants to get rid of the struggle to do it, God. She wants to be able to do it and do it in freedom, God. And she's not worried about the battle. God, I pray right now, God, that you will come in, God, and what she cannot do, what she cannot finish, God, I pray that ask that you will finish it. God, that is my prayer, and I ask, God, you would do me this favor. God, that everything, God, that she cannot finish, God, God, I touch and agree with her faith. God, that you will finish it right now in the name of Jesus. Shornayu, so yelehe yamando shakosi yamande eshi. Shoro mo shikaman soho yamandiye. This is another one, God, who has already said yes to you, God, and I pray, God, that there will be another stir of the Holy Spirit inside of her. Right now, God, I pray, God, you will fill her afresh. Refill her afresh. Shornayu, man, soho yamande. Oh, there he is, Lord. Yeah, my high, yeah, she got here. Oh, feel his power. Man, they let see my so yaman, yeah, come here. Yeah, they see a man so much. She come on, yeah, he's here. God, I pray God that you even remove the condemnation. God says you're forgiven. God says you are forgiven. You are forgiven. God, remove the condemnation. Oh, she, yaman, oh, she, yaman. Yes, God, when the condemnation came in, God, it affected her prayer life. It affected her praise life. She said, God, God I messed up, but God, God says, I, 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 I've already forgiven it. I've already thrown it in the sea of forgiveness. When you were at home and you were on your knees and you cried, and you said, God, forgive me. God said, I already did. I threw it in the sea of forgiveness. Remove it, God. I pray that you will remove the memory and the stain and the residue, God, that the enemy will try to keep in her mind. That he will try to keep as a fishing rod and as bait to keep pulling her back. I thank you. God, that freedom is once and all in her temple. Oh, show Kaiman Singh. Oh, Balian Singh, Ya Shereman de Liske. So roho yaman bande beli an man se ye sheka yama. Oh roche yaman de desi ka yaman dia. Shila roche le desi ka masa. Turning us se ya. Turning us se ya ma she aga. God says I'm turning it. Turning it for your favor. I'm turning it for your favor. Oh, even the even the rough and, and, and negative situations you've been dealing with recently, God says you didn't know. God, the devil meant it for evil, but God said I meant it for your good, and I'm turning it for your favor. Oh, I hear God saying He's turning some things around for you. God, the blessings are getting ready to overtake you. The goodness and mercy is following you all the days of your life. I thank you right now, God, as she walks in, God, as she walks in, God, as she walks in, God. Even though she may be alone for a season, God, that you are already prepared for her future and her destiny. You've already prepared her Boaz. Mm-hmm. I hear God even saying that Mary is going to be coming in the future for you. God is going to send 
Sin is thought to have the same desire that you have, the same, the same sincerity that you have. You may have made some mistakes, but the one thing is that you aren't playing. And she's been praying to God for this stuff, God. So you're going to say, I heard you're praying, I'm going to And then it's in. God says, you remain faithful. Remain faithful. Remain faithful. Remain faithful. I hear him saying it over and over. Stay faithful. Stay faithful. Stay faithful. I hear God saying it. He's trying to mess with you. He's trying to make you feel like you're getting weary and well doing. But God says, stay faithful. Stay faithful. Stay faithful. God said, for in due season, you will keep praying God. I pray for this, God. I pray that this is your son, God. And I pray, God, that your freedom will overtake his baby. That your freedom will overtake his baby, God, right now. Oh, shame. Lift your hands high. That your freedom will overtake his baby, God. Yes, Lord. I thank you, God. I thank you, God, that I, I, see, I see some seriousness in his heart, God. I see some seriousness in his heart, God. When others may have been playing, God, I see some sincerity, God. We, where he really is saying, yes, but God, there's, there's just a few issues. There's a few issues he's trying to get over. He's trying to get past. God, so I rebuke, God, the hand of the enemy that is in his life. God, I destroy every time that the enemy tries to implement to him, God, trying to make him feel like he can't change. I cancel all relapsing, God, of, of getting free and going back, of, of getting free and going back. I cancel that right now in the name of Jesus, God. I speak, God, there's a continuation of favor and faith upon his life. God, that he'll be able to walk this thing out in you. He'll be able to walk this thing out in you, God. I pray right now, God, that he'll be blessed, God. That he'll be blessed and prosperous. But God, I need you to do this. God, I need you to rule out everything in him that is not like you. Even those desires that he battles with. Those desires, God. I destroy them now. I destroy them now in the mighty name of Jesus. I destroy. Oh, the holy motion. Ye karman so te yalahaya. I destroy them now. And from his belly, God started stirring with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Oh, there goes say your shiko my leon say. There he is. Say tiger shiko my leon. I pray, God, that you will fix it. God, I hear him saying, God, even, I hear, even hear him praying, God, he said, God, I can't change. But God, you can change. God, whatever he can't do, you can do. So God, we pray unto you now and you was able to keep him from falling and present him faultless. I pray, God, right now, God, that anything is not that is not like you, God, that this will be his moment. This will be his moment of breaking forth freedom. And this will be his moment where he is released and he's able to walk forward. God, and what it is that you have for him, God. I, I speak freedom in his temple. I speak freedom in his temple now. Shera. So yaman de I speak freedom in his temple. Yeah, there he is. Freedom in his temple. Yes, sir. Oh, she yaman de. Freedom. Freedom. I'll break it off of you. Hey. I'll break it off of him. Hey, all hey, oh, this, listen, your moral behavior, I'll break it off of him, God. God, all oh, sexual immorality, I'll break it off of him, God. Where the enemy tries to bring temptations, God, where, where he's bringing temptations and it makes him feel like he's getting weak and getting into it. But God, I thank you right now, God, that he will stand strong. That he will stand strong. That his mind will be shifted to think of those things that are good and honest and, and true and have a good report of And God, that he'll, that, that, that he'll be able to experience your love and your presence in a great measure in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of God, I thank you right now, God, for this your son. I thank you, God, for this young man. God. This young man, God, will be a man of strength. That he will be a man of character. A man of integrity. And so he came up here honestly, God, and wanted some help from some stuff. And God, I pray right now that everything that he's already confessed to you in this heart, God, that you will cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. That you will be evicted and you will destroy the very hand of the enemy that has been upon his life. 
that baptizing the fire. Oh, show me the man by your servant that I'm on social. He up in his pocket. He up in his mind. He's this Sheikh Ahmad who is a great and he's good. Yeah, he has a good heart. He has good character. He's honest. He's honest. He's honest to God. He has some struggles. And so God, I pray. God, I pray that you would move in me. Oh, I sense this one. Yes, Lord. The Lord says, I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to do it for you. I feel the Lord moving in you already. Already, already, she are not sorry, she levanted. She saw that my hand in the form of she can not say that we are not the man so we were moving from land in the Marais and the Moshkai. In the year 14 years, I hear you show up at a band, they listen and we can answer. Show seek Rama Hai and the only man. Yes, yes, the Tana, the Raki, the Kriyans, Taisha. Who can live behind me? God, I thank you. I thank you, God, for this yoke vessel. God, there is a changing, God, there's a building up in him. God, you keep building, God. You're building his courage and his self esteem. His courage and his self esteem, God, to be able to stand on you, God. And not to worry about what people feel and what people think, God. Not to worry about what people have to say, God, but he'll be able to stand on what he needs to stand on in you, God. Freedom is hard in his mind. Freedom in his mind, Lord. Freedom, 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 freedom. I hear the Lord saying, I've already done it in you. She can answer the Lord. He can answer. She can answer the Lord. She can answer the Lord. He can answer the Lord. He can answer the Lord. God said, he's already done it in you, son. He's already done it in you. God said, walk it out. And then you feel like the temptation and the point of the enemy is coming. God said, continue to stand strong. Continue to stand in faith. He said, well, God, I made a mistake. God said, I already forgave you. You asked me to forgive me. Stand strong. Continue to move forward. Forward march. Forward march. God, I thank you for this young man who was gifted. God would stay in you. God, the enemy will not snatch him up. God, that he was trained in the way that he should go. God, I pray that he will not depart. God, that he will continue to go. He will continue to flourish. God, so every gift that you give it to him, God, he will give it back to the kingdom. We thank you for doing it in Jesus' name. God bless him. Make him prosperous. Amen. 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 God, I thank you right now for this show. And I pray for her, God. As she came up here, God, she just wants to be free. And the enemy tried to make her stay in her seat. The enemy tried to make her stay in her seat because he did not want her to come up here and be free. But God, this was a divine appointment. God, this, all of this, God was orchestrated for her. Show and I root out every hand of the enemy. Every seed that he has planted inside of her. God, there is too much purpose on her life. Oh, so yaman de heshikam. There is too much purpose to be bottled down with something like this. God, I thank you right now, God, that the, the good work that you've begun in her, God, that the good work you've begun, God, that you will finish it until the end. Oh, she yaman so shalevai mi boko sheye. Yeri an so teman do boho yaman se. God, the relationship he already began to build with you, God, that it will be cultivated, it will go to the next level. God, I pray that she'll begin to hear your voice even more. God, that she'll hear your voice, God, that she'll hear your voice and be obedient. God, that she's changing, God. God, even right now, God, you're changing some things in her, God. I pray that you give her more boldness. Give her more boldness, God. Give her more boldness. This is, this is not the season to sit back and relax. But God, give her the boldness and the courage to say, I've got to do what God told me to do. I'm not worried about what's, what's going, how it's going to work out. I'm not worried about the things that I have to deal with. God's got me as long as I stay focused on his plan. Oh, Shay, I'm not so Show your mind so God. I thank you for another pure heart. I thank you. God, she has her heart. She, she's giving you her heart, Lord. And the enemy tries to make her second guess. He always a he's a liar. The devil is a liar. He's a liar. She is not going back. She is not living in reverse, God. She's moving forward in the name of Jesus. 
moving forward in the name of Jesus. God, I speak over our life, God, as you can see the front where God is, she'll be the head of her class. The head of her class, God. God, not number two, three, but number one, the head. Show my associate. Rokedaman de the kiss in my road, Telebo Kushia. Mendeman Baral, repeats time so Mohoshia. Fire of Holy Spirit come into her right now. God, I pray, God, that she would feel her afresh. Oh, Lord, God, feel her afresh, God. God, give her the strength, God, to fully surrender to you, God, even away in the area she don't understand, God. Even in the things she may not be able to comprehend right now, God, but there'll be a yes in her spirit, God, a yes in her soul. God, a yes that she won't be able to let go, a yes, a yes. God, and whenever you tell her to move, she just says yes, God, even when she don't know how it's going to work out, yeah, God. God, whatever you say, God, I don't know how you're going to do it, but God, yes, I don't know how it's going to work out, God, but yes, yes, the spirit of surrender. God, that she be submissive to your plan. God, and you are going to open up. There's, there's an unfolding of a mystery that, that God has upon your life. You, you're, you're, you're gifted and you're wise, but you think that that's your, your gift, but that's really not. God, God has gifted you in so many areas. God has gifted you in so many areas. I see you being an encouragement to young women. Not even just young women, young women and young men. I see you being an encouragement. There are actually people that are walking, watching you and have been blessed by your life and you don't even know. They've been watching you and saying, God, look at her. Look at how she's moving forward. Look at how she's blessed. I want my life to be like hers. And, and so, God, I think God, the people that are watching her, God, you'll continue to raise her up, God, so they won't be disciplined. I'll continue to bless her. Move forward in the name of Jesus. I'll pray a special blessing upon her life, upon this tender heart, God, that she'll be a closer to you than ever before, God, and that every thought of the enemy is rooted out of her mind, and she will not struggle anymore, she will not battle anymore. God, I speak right now, the enemy does not have control over her, that he does not have a right to her. God, that she is rightfully yours in the mighty name of Jesus. God, that she'll move forward in her freedom and in her liberty. But when the Spirit of the Lord is, say Shia, Roshe Taman de Bekishia, there is liberty. I pray that it's your spirit was stirring her in him. Stirring her again, God. Liberty, God. Liberty, Shaya. So Kayaman, so Boshitaya, Spirit. God, she knows she's wise. She knows she's gifted. But God, the one thing she needs for you to do is free her on the inside. Free, free her in her mind, God. Free her with faith, God. So that what everybody else can see, she can see herself. That's the battle, God. She doesn't, she doesn't see it. They see it. They see it, but God, she doesn't see it, God. Oh, Shaya. God, lift her self-esteem. Lift her self-esteem, God. She says, I'm a child of a king. I deserve the best. I am not at the back of the line. I am not at the bottom. I am first, not the last. I'm the head and not the tail above and not the lender, not a borrower. God, and I thank you, God, that you are the God that I able control God, even our very destinies, God, and control our personalities, God, and you created her this way for a reason. And God, so, God, I pray that every attack on her personality, every attack on her character, God, I cancel depression. Show non so shame. No, 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 I counsel the spirit of depression, and even when loneliness tries to creep in, God, and, and, and tries to make her feel bad, God, I can't destroy that right now in the name of Jesus. God, let her know that you're always there. That you're always there. You never ever left her. You never left her, God. Even when she made a mistake, you never left her. You never left her, God. So we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Continue to bless her, God. Thank you, God. I pray for this woman of God. I pray right now, God. God, she knows that there's purpose for her. She already knows that there's purpose. She pleads on some whole shape. God, you've already called her forward. I already see her stepping forward and moving forward. But I pray right now, God, that, that you will push her to the max. Mm -hmm. Everything that has held her back, I destroy it right now in the name of Jesus. Every lie that the enemy tries to tell her, we destroy it. It is not true. God, I speak out that she will not be bottled down, that she will not be battled on the inside. On the inside. She, she will not be bothered in her heart. Say not, oh, Shea. So, God, I counsel this talk of war. Say not, so anybody here. God, a tongue of war, God, she said yes to you and she's committed. 
God, like the enemy is, is pulling on her tooth and nail, God. But God, she said it yeah to you, God. But it's been like every step she's trying to take forward. God, it's something, something there. Somebody, God, pushing her several steps back. God, even the people. God, I can't the people not speaking negatively in her ears, God. Every word, God, I destroy it right now in the name of Jesus. And I speak, God, that you will be a guard into her ears, God. Protect her right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, every hand, God, the enemy, God, the enemy thought he won with this one. She made a mistake. He thought he had her. Hey, he thought she wasn't ever going to get back here. But God, I thank you, God, that you put a burn in her spirit. You put a burn in her spirit and say, I've got to get back to my daddy. I've got to get back to my father. She, I said, my Neoshaya. Yes, she cream on Solomonia. So, God, I pray, God, that there's a restoring. That there's a restoring, God, that there'll be a time of refreshing in her life. A time of refreshing. A time of refreshing, God. I cancel every battle. I cancel every battle, God. I hear it. I cancel every battle. God, when she's saying yes, she's saying yes, but the enemy tries to remind her uh, of a battle or struggles, God, uh, that, that, that she'll feel alone, that companionship thing, God, that, that is there. I, I destroy that right now in the name of Jesus. I speak, God. I speak that she stands firm in you, God. God, nothing wavering. God, nothing shaking, God. But, but there's a complete and a full surrendering of death in this woman of God's life. I thank you, God. God, that there's a bright future in front of her, God, that there is a bright future. God in front of her, God. There was that there, there, there were things, God, so many things she hasn't even accomplished. God, you said she hasn't even scratched the scratch, God. She 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 don't even know God. 